is our generation. I don't mind. Welcome on in, everybody. It's my design studio Saturday. I'm getting off to the start. Let's get some things loaded up here. Welcome on in, everybody. Welcome, welcome on in. Uh, pretty scorchy day today. We got about over 90 degrees of freedom. Uh, this lovely Saturday. Supposed to continue, I guess, into tomorrow as well. So, uh, yeah, we definitely did uh, catch up, I guess, with a lot of people just dealing with the warm weather. So, it was kind of a little bit of a unsure, a lot of unsureness, I guess, about what I wanted to go over, I guess, today. I got a lot of uh, little projects, I guess, to cover. Uh, be it the fact that the Dairyland map that I have been working on, I guess, uh, previous episode of Splat Inside Studios is uh, pretty much over. The map is out there. Uh, so I have a lot of that. Uh, those tasks, I guess, out of the way. So it looks like I don't have uh, too much to deal with on that. Uh, not too many uh, reports, I guess, of any uh, problems, I guess, with things going on the map. So that's probably a good thing, too. Um, Yeah, so I just got a lot of these smaller projects I guess, to work on, so that's probably uh, what I'll focus on for the most part. Um, one of them being, and I have sh uh, shown this before in previous uh, episodes, I guess, of Swine Design Studios, Saturday, um, happens to be the um, somewhat universal cooperative elevator that I've been working on uh, for the better part of next to a year and a half now that's been brought to my attention. So, uh, it has been put into the Farming Simulator 19 uh, simulation, so the model is in there. It is done, it just needs to get uh, finished up. Uh, one of the last things that I had worked on was the, uh, what is being considered the feed mill uh, for the entire complex. So, uh, that's probably what I'm going to get right into, I guess. Uh, um, see, also before I forget, I know I posted that in there, it gets as far as the start of stream there. Uh, still running the campaign uh, for support of Morning Warrior Project. Uh, so as far as any any and all donations and or monies contributed, I guess, to that, that campaign go directly to benefit uh, the Wounded Warrior Project. So uh, that will be going 
through the end of the month, um, as far as the end of June here. Uh, fastly approaching the end of June already, which is kind of crazy, <laughs> really considering. But uh, yeah, I, it's kind of an extension of what I normally uh, stream on Wednesdays in support of Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, just running the campaign for the entire month. Um, so far, I haven't gotten a whole lot of participation and or interaction, I guess, with that campaign, but uh, still got some time yet. Still got time yet. Uh, we got a week or, week or so, I guess, left in that in the month there, so uh, hopefully that does uh, pick up some steam, I guess, on that. So, alright, let me go ahead and bring this over just to kind of give you all a taste of what I got going on here. Uh, let's see if I can bring this over to this monitor. Okay. So, as I was mentioning, as far as the, the feed mill um, aspect of the, the, the entire complex here, I got my uh, material editor, as well as uh, some of the items, one of the items at least anyway. Um, UVW unwrapped here so I can tell uh, where I've got things mapped I guess as far as the initial texture that I'm going with here which is this is the initial texture obviously going to be in a lot of modification to it um, it's based on some other textures that I have already applied so it's just kind of a base some of this I won't need at all uh, but there are some areas that I've already used I guess to be able to map uh, some of it in here uh, for that. I'm going to end up moving this. That's why I've got this in the uh, in a different layer here. I, can, I need to make I've got this small little sample of uh, just unpainted concrete block here which I need to change here. So I want to make a bigger section similar to like what I got with the white here. Uh, just make it bigger. So I've got a sample in here like this or I have this sample I already have in here. So, not 100% sure what I want to go with yet. I'll just kind of play around with it and see what's uh, what looks good. Uh, whatever suits my fancy here, and I'll just go with it. Um, so, while I've got this unwrapped, I want to be able to move this off of that. And initially put that there based on the idea. I was going to keep it there based on this, right? So, and that's again based on a previous texture that I used so the fact that I want the white, white blocks to be here I need some unpainted uh, blocks I guess to be in another area where I'll put that yet I'm not 100% sure yet still need to determine that like I said there'll be some uh, heavy modification I guess to this texture as we move along okay so I've got this and I'll probably have to do this to every one of these silos. The only bad thing um, is just to move that. And it's just going to be remapping, I guess, as far as where uh, the feet of these are. That's basically what that represents there. So if I go into this, kind of get a sense of what's going on here. So if I go into here, and we're going to poly mode. Whoops, not that much. So if I go into here, you can see all that is just the feet of these silos here. So, not incredibly a, a difficult task uh, to accomplish here, but that's something we do need to address anyway. Uh, let's see here. Alright, let's go here. So, it's just a matter of where I want to put this. I'll probably just go ahead and grab this and move it out of the way just for now. I'm not too concerned, I guess, as far as where they belong. Once I get the... Uh, texture a little bit more situated as far as what I want to actually go with uh, texture wise you know texture layout wise for this uh, entire feed mill aspect I guess of the complex um, we'll better know where we want to go with it so let's go ahead and just move this out of the way until we're ready for them it may even go so far as to kind of put these in a different uh, different orientation as well because the fact that I've got these kind of spread out uh, I might try to put all this in one area um, that's another thought 
Uh, let's see here. Yeah, because in fact I get it. I get a different pattern for this here than I do for that there. I don't think it'll change the dynamic of that too much. In fact, we can really take a look at that and see. So if I grab these. See, that's the top part of the silo here. So that's all that top part. It may not be too much of a big deal to be able to move that into a, a different area. So let's see, let's just turn this off here. Yeah. So we can see, so there's still a highlight. All I did was just toggle off the highlight of those polys. All right, so let's go into this. I'm going to try moving these down here into this area. That way I can have better use of this up here for something else. And we'll kind of get an idea of how this is going to look. I have to scale that down just a little bit. Let's right, see so if we can move this over. So we can see how that's going to look on here. As I move this around, you can see how that's changing. So it's not going to be real critical as long as I keep it probably in this. Um, uh, I don't know if I did a fold, a folding map or how I exactly how I did this. So most of these are uh, uh, just a planar, a planar map or a flat map. So we just want to get this to fit into this here like that, so you can kind of see how that looks. That's not really going to change the dynamic of it all that greatly as far as moving it from up here so I can use that for something else and I bump it down here so we'll put this down in this corner like so and then these here uh, be at the feet of these uh, it'll be some uh, it's like concrete there so I could probably even put that onto this here if I wanted to you can see how that looks so let's check the feet out here. So right now I just got it out of the way. Let's do this. All right, so now we'll take, <clears throat> now I think all of those feet uh, for the silo, they're all in this one area. So I can just grab, uh, in poly mode here, just grab all those. Now if I do the F2, you can kind of see that's all these feet here, so I should be able to put those right in this area. And that should look decent, we'll have to see. Check it out. Let's turn that F2 off, you can kind of see what's going on there. Okay. And we'll scale this in. So you get the idea here. So I can probably put this even like that into one block. Something like that. That's not too terrible. I am not disliking that. Let's see what's... Uh, Let's render that just to see what's going on here. Yeah, I'm not totally disliking that. That's pretty decent. You can see that metal metal texture, I guess, on the rest of the silo. Let's check out the top here, too, while we're at it. Let's render that real quick. Even from here, without rendering, it still looks pretty decent. Oh yeah, that'll work nicely. That will work. Okay. Now I have different sizes of these uh, silos in here, as you can tell. Uh, two of these are the same. Uh, probably what I'm gonna end up doing is just going into each individual one and just. Uh, apply the UVW unwrap uh, and since I'm only doing with the top and these feet here and it's all pretty much in one one area I can move that uh, to the appropriate area on the texture um, be entirely too difficult as opposed to just doing one of them and then just rescaling it up I, I, that's 
another approach I could take to it, definitely. But, uh, just to apply the unwraps to each one of them, that should be fine. It'll create a little bit, uh, a little bit of randomness, I guess, due to the, the application of the UVW a little bit, too. That's if I don't grid snap the, the polys, I guess, to those different areas of the texture, anyway. Okay. Turn that down just a tad there. Alright. Just making sure the stream things are going there good. Okay, now. This one's pretty much done. So I'm just going to take note of where I put those items in here. So from here down to here. And then I put the feet into this one block here. So that should be good. That should work. <clears throat> torch sneaking in there with a shot. How are we doing here, Torch? Alright, so yeah, what I'll do is, uh, this one's done. I'll just call that one good to go. So I'll recollapse that on your app. Alright. So let's go to this one, and we'll do an unwrap. And I got my little shortcut in here now. Um, you can't necessarily go through the rollout as far as to go the long way here. I've got it set up on a toolbar, which is easy to do as far as just to do a right click and set that up in your, uh, as far as your toolbars. I'm going to go that too much there. There's, uh, we've got a tutorial for that, I guess, to be able to show how that goes, but it's not incredibly that difficult. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good idea, I guess, to put things in there. So things up here that you know you're using, you'll use a lot. Um, I do have one, I guess, to, uh, I gotta edit poly modifier sometimes. Instead of doing the right click and then, uh, uh, convert to edible poly, I can just click that right there instead of doing the right click and just save some, some mouse clicks is all. Alright, so with this unwrapped, I'll go ahead and open up the edit window. And that should all be in this texture. So once again, I want to take this area, put it down here. And then the feet that I have over here, put it in this block over here. So doing good here, Torch. Uh, a little bit of a scorcher today. I guess as far as weather rise. I think I've, uh, the area here has finally got caught up, I guess, with mo what most others are uh, dealing with as far as, you know, next to 100 degrees. <laughs> 100, 100 degrees of freedom, I guess as we call it. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty warm here. It's kind of nice to be inside, I guess, for a little bit. It's a little cooler. Alright, so yeah, we want to take, in poly mode, we want to grab all this. And I'm going to move it down here, just like we did the other silo. Just rearranging some of the UV mapping. Uh, for silos here. I'm not changing the dynamics of this too much. Just want to put that roughly right there. Now whether or not I decide uh, later on I guess to grid snap that, probably not all that necessary. I'm not going to be applying any ambient occlusion or anything to that. I'm letting the texture do the majority of the work as well as the uh, just the uh, detail of the model itself between the texture and the model itself to do majority of the work. So as far as needing to apply ambient occlusion or anything like that won't be necessary. So uh, if we do have some offset overlap, I guess as far as the polys, that'll be okay in this case. I'm gonna scale this down. So these here are the feet. Silo there. I'm not sure they have two back then. So you can see those are just the feet. Again, just the same as I'd done uh, on the previous silos, all. And <clears throat> just taking this approach or whatever, because it's not uh, that much. If there was a lot more uh, UVW unwrap, I guess involved, you know, to try to get it lined up certain things, I probably would have take the approach uh, to just do one of them, one of the silos, and then just clone that. And you know, resize it, I guess, to put them back uh, in the appropriate positions. But uh, because I'm wanting to apply, I guess, a little bit of randomness, I guess, to the application of the texture, 
and not even necessarily go so far as to grid snap you know to line it all up there I'm just doing them one at a time and that's the approach I'm taking with this anyway so I'm gonna put that one right there just like, again just like we did the other one so now we got this a little bit more confined uh, towards the bottom of the texture and we'll have a lot more room up here to be able to uh, modify our texture to be able to you know put the different areas of this entire feed mill that we've got here onto our texture because uh, we'll need to map the, now the majority of this thing just to kind of refresh everyone's memory the majority of this thing that's one angle uh, does have a lot of white in it so it's like between white brick and uh, like a plywood so that's for the most part what I've got applied to this thing as far as the texture so yeah you see you got a lot of like white plywood and some white brick um, yeah so you can see the white brick I do need some unpainted blocks that's why I've got that to, as a sample in there I guess to answer yeah, there's the white brick you get some plywood um, need something for the roof which is more like a like a tin or a sheet sheet metal kind of a rib type of deal uh, let's go back here yeah so like this part here which will be uh, as far as our model we need this uh, unpainted block that's why I've got that sample in here as a texture to be able to do that uh, on a set of area on the texture here to be able to have just unpainted block that's going to be this area here what we're looking at in the picture reference here so this silo house I guess whatever you want to call it here that's what's represented on this here so that's one angle of it uh, let's see let's go back this way there's the other angle of it so that's this right here is representative of this right here so I want to be able to put uh, on painted concrete block there so just <clears throat> getting uh, a majority of the texture you know figured out as far as what I want to have where and I'm borrowing a lot of um, textures I guess from the previous texture this is this the um, I want to say decoy when I decoy the uh, donor uh, texture that I've applied there a lot of this is going to be modified as I said as we move along uh, because I want to accommodate it to the speed mill that we're trying to texture. Alright, so let's go back into here. Turn back. So I do have the white blocks. And I'm in the process of moving. Now, this one here is a fixed wire. I took a uh, um, UV template right from uh, 3ds Max itself to give me an idea of what areas were to use. So these are what I'm moving. I'm moving this area. At this area uh, between here and there so just moving a lot of this um, the silos where it's all spread out here so I can gain more access I guess to this part of the texture uh, to be able to put other things instead of having all spread out because I was trying different things when I previously textured I guess these silos and such I was trying different tech you know techniques and uh, just to get an idea of how things would look uh, so you will find yourself, as always, you know, testing out uh, different samples of textures onto your polys just to see how they look. And a lot of times you'll end up, uh, b b before the end of it, you'll end up moving your polys into uh, other areas of the texture so it's just nice and tidy. So it's just not all scattered about. So that's what we're going to be in the process of doing here is just getting the texture established so that we can start um, UV UV mapping um, all these uh, different parts of the feed mill, I guess, onto the texture. We got a, most of it established, you know, as far as um, our staircases and such. Uh, there might be some refinements we need to remake. Uh, like, we don't have any railings yet uh, for the stairs, for example. Uh, but as far as to get them initially um, textured, at least anyway, prior to adding any other aspects. Uh, to, to this uh, part of the model that can be done uh, after the fact you know, as far as like, but I've held off I guess as far as getting this textured for quite some time so I figured I'd just go ahead and get it 
Um, I'll probably put some type of a galvanized uh, type of texture um, for the silo towers. Uh, let's see if I bring that up here. So it's got a pretty good. I do have, um, again, I can use several examples of, um, of uh, you know, on parts of the models that I already have established. Let's see here. If I go into here, I might already have that open, actually. Yes, I do. Um, yeah, so I do have some textures here, for example. I do have it established for the, uh, I thought I had one for... I think I do, I just may not have a um, template for it. Let's see, yep, I probably don't have a template for it. Let me go up here. Let's see where I got the texture for it, so I'll go into here. Yeah, and then I've got... I remember what I name Yeah, so I got a silo catwalk deal right here don't need the mint maps so yeah I can use probably even like this or parts of it uh, to be able to apply to the tower I didn't necessarily make a uh, I thought I had made a layer template of this I know I had to do lots of cleanup on this thing but I think I might have just cleaned it up and just left it as a uh, DDS I'm not sure that's the texture that's the DDS texture that we've got applied <clears throat> to the final model of that. Uh, let me see here. Nope, I did not include that. Come on. Yeah, so I just got the silos one. I didn't do one for the catwalks for some reason. It wasn't incredibly difficult, I guess, to be able to do that. If you remember, that's going back a couple episodes. Um, all I had basically done was just to clean up uh, this part of the uh, catwalks here. That was mainly what we needed to do on that part, just to make them a little bit more uh, cleaner and crisper. But that might be something we could use to, just as far as apply to our feed mill, potentially. Um, okay. All right. I'm gonna continue moving these. We get too much of a hit of ourselves here. All right, so we've got those two things moved. Um, yeah, so we can kind of see how we did the feet into that area, and then we did the top and move that to the other area. So that looks pretty good. So we can close that one down. Let's go ahead and close collapse stall. Yes. And we'll move on to the next one. Um, yeah, let's just stay up here in the middle. So we'll do an unwrap. And open up the editor. Apply the texture. And we can see that same layout that we have here. So we're just uh, going to adjust those. They should all be similar. Alright, so in poly mode. Grab this. Move this down here and like I said I'm not too concerned with um, them being exactly over top I'm just getting in the general vicinity there so the fact that I'm not grid snapping you know as far as to make sure that they're all lined up I guess with the, the other silos that I've already moved that area of the the polys I'm not worried about that <clears throat> it will add a little bit of um, randomness I guess to the how the textures applied to each one too so there's nothing wrong with that but there's nothing that's specifically lined up as far as the pattern of the texture to say yeah that needs that needs to be a uh, grid snap for example so just get the same thing with that so that one's done this would be much quicker in the long run okay so we'll collapse that one down And let's get this one over here. Let's start this way and then we'll get these three. So do the unwrap. Up the editor. Texture. Just gonna span that out a little bit. Go into poly mode. Move 
the stone. So like I said, I'm not changing the dynamics as far as the, the type of mapping that's applied uh, to these bellies. I'm just repositioning them on the texture to put them in a different spot on there as far as the layout of it anyway. Nothing major. But this will put it in a tighter group, I guess, as far as it being all towards the bottom half of the tech of the texture itself, as opposed to stealing, I guess, a lot of this that I want to use, I guess, for the major parts, uh, as far as the walls and the cinder block, be it the white or the um, unwhite or unpainted concrete blocks that I'll need to apply to it. Okay. That'll work. And I can always move these around later on too. If I find out there's something that doesn't look right later on, I can always move that around too. So it's, I'll keep it somewhat tidy at least anyway in that regard. Alright, so let's collapse this down. Grab this one. Unwrap that. Um, open the editor. Apply the texture. Span that out a little bit. Poly mode. Noticing here, <clears throat> I think on the other the other one there, I might have ran it into this uh, lighter part, so I could probably adjust that. That was kind of what I was mentioning not too long ago, I guess, as far as if I wanted to, I can adjust those later on. But I think what I did on one of them, I think I had it in like this, for example, and I don't necessarily... So I could either adjust, adjust the polys on that for itself or just uh, the texture. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move this. <clears throat> so, um, Torch, if you're still you're still in there, what uh, what type of projects, I guess, have you been uh, indulging in lately? Are we still into the uh, track stuff there? As far as I think the last thing you were working on was Dover. Wondering how that's going. I've kind of stepped away from doing a lot of track stuff um, lately. There seems to be a lot of hype going on, I guess, with the uh, the I racing uh, North Wilkesboro, for example. We did a lot of work, I guess, on uh, North Wilkesboro for the NR 2003 simulation, but there seems to be a lot of uh, hype going on, I guess, about the one that iRacing did, so I've <clears throat> been taking quite a bit of a hiatus, I guess, on the track stuff for now. It's not that I haven't thought about um, working on a couple tracks, I guess, as far as just for the heck of it. Alright, so we'll collapse this one down. Alright, then we'll get this one. Unwrap. Editor. Texture. And. On poly mode. It's a bit of a relief in a way, I guess, as far as I had been working on for quite quite a while I guess there for uh, was just finishing up uh, the map build for the uh, farm sim 19 we got that thing out of the way and uh, moving on from that haven't heard any uh, major issues I guess with the map so that's probably a good thing and whatever issues I guess uh, anybody's encountering they seem to be figuring them out so that's, uh, that's a good thing as well <clears throat> All right, let's move this. All right, so 
so those are all done. Collapse the hole. Yes. Okay, so let's um now I got all these done here and I'll just get to get these three. So I'll just work my way from here over to do this one last. So let's go like that and we'll do an unwrap. And let's open up the editor. I want to expand this out a little bit. Poly mode. All these silos are pretty much mapped the same. I didn't uniform snap them, I don't think, necessarily. But I did much the same process as I'm doing right now, just to kind of move them in a different location of the texture. Yeah, let's get it roughly in that spot. There we go. These feet moved over here. <clears throat> All right. So that one. I'll go ahead and collapse that one down. Moving right along. I feel this way. Doing it this way, it might seem to be a little bit longer to do it this way, but um, it's actually pretty quick. Especially with these uh, shortcuts in here like that. No, I'm self-conscious, I guess, of this little lighter strip that's over here, because I know when I... One of those... If one of the first ones that I did there, I think I bled it into, I guess, that part, which is not a big deal. And we just got one more to do. Gives you a little bit of a rhythm, I guess, after a while there, as far as the steps you want to take there, as far as the workflow. <coughs> That's good. Yeah. And last but not least. should do it. So we got those all moved about. Collapse that all. Coop. Cool. Alright, so all those are done. Now that we've got all these, you know, that texture, we've got a lot more area to be at that. So now what I can do is I'll take, um, I'll do another, um, yeah, UV mesh, I'll export that out. Uh, from here as far as using that tool uh, in fact what I should have done um, I don't want to collapse these down uh, I can get the rough idea as far as where these are at I can take pretty much any one of these at this point I'll just take this first one I'll unwrap this really quick just to give me an idea of where that stuff is mapped 
can go from there. So let's do this. So with that like that, open up the editor, bring the texture in. I should have done that before I collapse that down on that last one, but that's okay. So just to get an idea of where this stuff is um, primarily mapped, I know not all of them are going to be 100% lined up there, but I'll have the general idea as far as where those are mapped. So I'm able to do tools, render UV template, and I need to set a 2048 on both height and width. So I'll spit this out like so. And then I'll apply that to our, our template, our texture template, so I know what areas are already used and which areas aren't. So I'll do that. That's going to put that on my other monitor here. Save this as wire 2 PNG. Already had a wire 1. I guess it give me that initial wire that I had. Okay, let's close that. Alright, so we close that. Now we can open that up into our paint program. Bring this up like so. There's my, here's the one I just saved. Now here's my new layout of the, um, yeah, moving that all around. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my alignment blocks. So I need one here. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in on this. It says to get it aligned up into my template more precisely. Alright, so we'll do an edit copy. Paste that into here. Actually, we'll put that right below this one now. Yeah. Alright, now we can get rid of this one. Don't need that anymore. So now all that's. Yeah, it's got that all the, that wire for all those pieces are uh, laid out on this texture. So now we got a better idea of oh, what we got, what area of the texture we we have uh, available to us now. I'm gonna take these alignment blocks out. Okay, that was just to ensure that I had it in the right position on the on the uh, layer texture anyway. Layer template. Alright, so I'm going to rename this to Wire. I'll go ahead and save it. Um, this one here is going to be, that's my sample for that concrete block. So once I get that into position, uh, get it lined up in here and all that good stuff, I'll rename that. Let's do that next, actually. So <clears throat> I've got this sample here for concrete blocks that aren't painted. And I've got a you know a sample in here already. I guess I can use as a guide to maybe get it to what I want size-wise. So I can just apply a deformation to this uh, based on this layer. All right, so let's go deformation. We should be able to. This might make it a little bit too big, but I can. Uh, Make the appropriate accommodations. Yeah, it's definitely going to make it too big. So what I'll do is I'll continue just to deform this until I get the size that I'm looking for, and then go from there. So that might be pretty good there. So I'm looking at these lines, trying to get those lines to line up. Let's zoom in here a little bit. And I'm going to leave these uncolored. So as far as the scaling of it, I want to get it something like that. Just using the uh, deformation tool. Alright, so let's get out of that. Okay, so these here will be off, so that's fine though. So as far as the half blocks, it's a little bit different setup, on, but that's okay. That we can deal with. Probably 
It's missing a mortar joint there. I might have to add that to based on this here. So actually, let's do this. Let's do this. So I'm going to take that. That's what I thought. Let's tone that down a little bit. That's too light. Let's uh, just bump it up a little bit more. Oh, for crying out loud. Alright, let's do it this way. Grab the color. Yeah, right about there. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a mortar joint on the bottom edge of this here. So I got mortar on both the top and the bottom. Okay, so we want this at probably just a one. No an alias cool. Might be able to go two on this, we'll see. Yeah, might be able to do a two or three on the thickness. I'll put it on a three. Eh, it might be too thick, let's try a two. That's pretty decent, like that. <clears throat> so now I can just put this into position. Like so, yeah. Beautiful. And I'll say I could be able to take this and just copy it, just make another pattern, just like I do with the white. Alright, so I'll do copy. Paste this new selection. Seeing those half blocks will actually turn into full blocks as a yeah that turned out to be a good, pretty decent pattern. Uh, let's copy that again. And we'll have a little bit of a sliver there. down to like that and then we'll take the rest of this this isn't a layer so I won't touch the others stuff there and just take and chop this off okay now we can copy that Looks like we got one row left. We'll do at least do one row. You can see that's in a different layer. Uh, I might have to turn that wire off actually. Let's try that. It's kind of in my way. Turn this one off, and while that's off, and I'm still going to stay in that layer, I'm going to trim that off. So we'll start from this point over, cut that out, and turn it back on. So now it's nice and trimmed up there. Cool. So now we got a concrete, just a plain concrete wall, concrete block wall. Um, we want to put this in a different area though. We don't want to put that over the white. Uh, I'm not really sure. I don't want to put that though. I want to situate that. I could probably put it over here for now. Let's try that. 
because uh, we do have this available now. Now that we move that, we do have that available to us now as far as in this area of the texture, so we don't have to worry about if it bleeds over that. So we could probably put it here easily enough. Yeah, I'm gonna be. I don't. I'd rather chop some of this off here because that's obviously. Uh, if you look at that, as far as like, it's not even a half block. So it's okay, I guess, if I, if I want to line this edge up here, which I know is cleaner, as far as the pattern of the mortar joints. So yeah, we can just do it like that. Uh, we could even do so far as to put these right next to each other if we wanted to. So we can definitely go like this. That way we can ensure we get a little bit of buffer in there too. And we still got this available. This I'm probably going to keep here as far as just to have some concrete. Um, I'll probably need some concrete to be able to texture onto the onto the model. I do need this for that one part, as I showed. Uh, we do have this area here. I'll probably have several different layers of polys, I guess, on this area. Uh, so we still got all this to use as far as the texture and this corner majority of so this is used already once and the majority of this metal is already used for the silos so that kind of gives us an idea if we turn the wire back on we're going to get that idea as far as what we still have available to us okay um, I'm probably going to use some of um, I might create a new one I may still use this part um, as far as for like the steps for example uh, I'm just not 100% sure yet. I might even just put the steps uh, where we got the staircases and all that um, in the model. I might put those here. Um, that could work. That way I can keep uh, the stairs in this area and keep the silos where they are. I'll have to see how this works. Let's see my playlist stop. I'll just let me. It's got to wake it up. Let it know it's still here. That work. Alrighty then. Alright, just make sure the stream things are still going there. Looks like we're still solid. Already working on that first hour into the stream. It's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. I mean, definitely having some fun. Alright, so all that's done now. Um, I can collapse this uh, unwrap. This is all done. I just wanted to get that wire. Collapse that. And do a whole yes. Okay. So about the only thing that's really mapped entirely are these silos. The rest of this, has, as far as all the different colors that are present in here to include these towers, are not mapped yet. So. I think where I'll start, just to really add some dynamic um, to this overall model, is to apply some texture like to these uh, walls and such. I do probably need something uh, to simulate the roofing on this because it's got like a sheet metal, uh, like a white sheet metal onto it. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Ooh, almost got the slots there. Missed it by one. Alright, so that's probably something I'll want to apply uh, to the texture some type of sheet metal. Um, and I've got several samples, I guess, as far as that I can use uh, on previous projects that I've worked on. So, like. The open shed. I got an open shed. I just gotta find it. Well, <laughs> that's the only thing. I gotta go to. I should be all on my Dairyland map stuff. So let me look in there. Yep. So that's one good thing, I guess, as far as when you're working on several different other projects, you have the means of being able to uh, reuse stuff that you've made in a in a previous project. Uh, let's go into here. I got this open barn. 
And here's the DDS for that. No minutes. So yeah, I got some sheet metal I could potentially use on that. Let's just recolor it. Yeah, I can just recolor this to white. Um, I don't have a layer template for that, apparently, so I'll just go ahead and piece this out, I guess, from the, uh, the DDS file. It's kind of interesting that I don't have... Nope. Oh. Nope, oh, sure didn't. <laughs> Sometimes I just, uh, it just depends on how complex, I guess, the texture, uh, template is as far as what's all involved with it sometimes I just don't save them you know if it's rather simple like on this one here I can easily just pull those uh, those different areas out if I wanted to and then at this point here like I said I can just uh, take this and just recolor it as far as to apply a different color to it so let's grab that and I probably don't even need it that big, but uh, I'll go ahead and grab it just, just the same. Then into a new image. Minimize that. So whether or not I need it this big, like you say, is first. I can probably go turn this. We'll rotate this to the left. 90 degrees. And I'll apply that into our texture here. And I'll probably... I can, Probably put that right above our blocks here, say for example. Resize it in there. Because I did include some of that black in there, I don't need that. Let's crop this down a little bit. Clean it up. There we go. Uh, okay, let's make this white. So we'll go layers, adjustment layer. Try it this way for starters. Nope, that's too much. Okay, so let's try brightness and contrast. Yeah, I'll do. Get some really funky. Uh, another way I could probably do this. Let me try it this way too. I've done it this way as well in the past. So let's do. Colors. I'm gonna do it as a grayscale. It'll turn a little bit dark, but that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, increase to 16 million, and then I'll do a colors and then negative image. Nope, that went the wrong way. Okay. Fair enough. So let's do this. We'll do an edit. Copy, edit, paste that as a new layer. And then we'll do this way, we'll try difference. No, that's definitely not good. Screen. See, now we're getting somewhere. It's actually not too bad. Let's try one more layer of that. Copy and paste that as a new layer. That's a little too bright, so let's probably tone that down a little bit. And now we're getting somewhere, though. What I'm comparing it to is this white I've already got in here. Now, even if I got a little bit of variation, I guess, in the white, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Because you're going to have some fading and that kind of stuff, I guess, as far as on your different facets of uh, the building, as far as the ceiling and stuff like that. It's going to be different, you know, so in, like in reality. So, it won't be too bad that way. I don't know how we got on this playlist, but I'm going to go back here a little bit. Let me go back to. He doesn't have. He needs to put more in that that particular playlist here on Techno Axe. To be honest, let me turn that off and go right back to this one here. There we go. That's better. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> as I was saying, um, the fact that if we got a little bit of variation in the white, as far as getting exactly the same colors, like uh, this is our plywood. This is our white block, and this is our, um, what will serve as our roof. 
parts there. If, there, if there's a little bit of variation in, in the white color, it won't matter because you're going to have different variations of you know, fading and stuff like that as far as the type of paint and what type of material, I guess it was painted, the white was painted on. So this should be pretty good right here for starters. So we'll go ahead and layers, flatten that down. Copy this, and we're going to paste this into its own layer. And then we can size it up. That's actually not bad right there. Okay, so let's see. Let's line this up like so. That's pretty decent. I could probably even go so far as to move this concrete over to here and have all my white stuff over here. So between our plywood, our sheet metal, and then our blocks, and have that block here. So I can probably put this over here. This is in its own layer, so I'll be able to take that concrete and move it over here. So like I said, there's going to be a lot of modification in the texture just to kind of get it uh, to make a little bit of sense as we go to apply uh, our mappings, I guess, to the, the different parts of the model. So I didn't clean that up there very good. Still got a little bit of a... Uh, here, let me do this. I'm going to keep that layer. I'm going to clean that up just a little bit more. So I got a little bit of black. I'm going to trim this down. I'm going to crop this down a little bit more. Get that out of there. Like that. Now I'll recopy that into that layer. Oops. I think I did that. So let's do that. selection I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna move that concrete like I said so I'll turn this layer off go back into this base layer trim this out edit copy and I'm gonna put this in its own layer and I'll put that, let's see, yeah, we'll put it right above that layer. We'll keep it close to the, the base layer. All right, so we'll do an edit paste. New layer. Can I put it in here? Yep. Well, it's underneath all that gem mess there, I got gotcha. you. Um, let's see, the metal. Yeah, it's behind this, that's why. Let's turn this one off. Yeah, there it is. Grab that and we'll put that right over here. So this I must have in this metal layer. Okay, I gotcha. I'll see what I did there. So this piece here, I might just take that out of the, that metal layer because I got metal all like that. All right. So in this layer here, I'll just cut that out. That metal layer. Don't need that there anymore. Okay, let's go back in that concrete layer, which is here. And we'll reposition that. There we go. Let's move it up just a little bit. Alright, so now we got that there. Um, turn our blocks back on. There's that. Now we've got our sheet metal. I'm going to rename this. So, white sheet metal. So, I know what that is. So now we'll have all our white stuff, like I said, we'll have the white blocks here, the sheet metal and the plywood there. We got our concrete here, and then our, basically anything concrete, concrete blocks and just our regular concrete, you know, as far as for like platforms and stuff like that there. And then we still got this area we can, we can use. Uh, this one here, what did I say that was? That's our con concrete blocks. I'll just put concrete blocks. name 
doing that so we know what that is. And then this layer is just going to be concrete. Rename this one to just concrete. It does help, I guess, to kind of give you an idea as far as just keeping them all generic names as far as layers. Just to kind of give you an idea of where you got what. Makes it quick reference as far as to be able to move those layers around if you find it necessary. So we still got this area here we can use for something. So between this area, I'll probably use this area here, left in the metal, I guess, for the stairs. Okay. Uh, a lot of this area here we can is unused as well. So uh, so far, I think I got pretty much all the main areas covered. As far as our concrete, our concrete blocks, uh, we'll probably have to put like some doors um, in some areas. So we can either use that area or this area, I guess, for that. We'll get to that. Okay. What I'm going to do for now is go ahead and save this as our female diffuse texture, our layer template. Cool. Just kind of save that work. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn that wire off. And I'll save again. It's still in there. Just want to want it on when I open it. There we go. Give me a starting point for that. All right, I think we're ready to at least get some initial um, mapping, I guess, onto this here. I'll start with this area right here. And that's going to be, let's see if I can get it to here. That is going to be roughly this uh, part here. So it's going to be this. It's got concrete blocks. It's got some plywood on that part. And then the sheet metal uh, for the roofing there. I don't think I got another. Yeah, here's a better angle too. So we're going to work on this part here. Uh, we'll get the concrete block applied to that part. As far as all that, and it's got some plywood in here. We may need to. No, because we know that there's a separation of texture, uh, we can probably go ahead and cut the poly straight across. So I don't think I have it that way so far. So that we can accommodate, I do have a cutout for a door, uh, but I, I need a cut from here straight across uh, to be able to accommodate that separation of material between the plywood here and the blocks. Um, it's going to be pretty much all blocks on this side, so I don't need to worry there just on this side. And then there's plywood on this part, but I believe I got, yeah, this right here but I got that a part of this here okay I should really separate this from here and make that part of that I mean I don't have to but I mean that's 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 an option okay anyway I'm still gonna stick with my original plan and work on this here so I want to put a cut basically straight across from this corner and go straight all the way through uh, to here. So in order to do that, to make sure it's straight, uh, I'll just do initial cut and then I'll be able to get the vertex, the Z vertex uh, coordinate from here and line it up on this end so I know it's straight across. So even if I don't get it straight across, I guess initially, uh, I mean, I can even go so far, this is its own object right now. I can do a swift loop um, if I wanted to, that would cut it all the way through even to the other side, uh, which probably wouldn't matter. Um, in fact, yeah, maybe I will go ahead and try that just to see how that works. That would give me much more of a straight cut. Okay. I just got to remember my shortcut. I think I did it as a shift S. If I remember right, if I set up my shortcut right on that, if I do a shift S. Yep, there's my swift loop, uh, but I want to be able to switch it. Uh, let's see if it'll... It's not wanting to go where I want it to go. And technically, what the swift loop will do is it tries to find average edges. 
So the fact that it's not wanting to put one on this front side where I want it to cut may not work for me. Alright, so that may not work the way I want it to do, unfortunately. So let's shut that off. So I'm going to go with my other plan as far as just to take a cut. I'll cut the poly from this corner all the way over and then I can always line that up based on the Z coordinate of this vertex. Okay. And this is its own box. Like I said, it's its own thing so I don't have to worry about cutting in anything else. Uh, it is as an animal poly already so that's good. Let's go to cut. And I'm going to put this on vertex and edge snaps only because I'm starting on a vertex but I'm going to an edge. All right. Do it like this. This might be a little tricky. I can always move it, I guess, once I cut it too. That's the other good thing about it. Just cut it straight across here and go to that edge, hopefully. Uh, come on, snap to it. It's not wanting to do it. Come on. You dirty rat. That's not even wanting to work. See, it's wanting to snap to that one, which is which would work. Come on. The light doesn't want to snap. All right, hold on. Let me reorient this here. Let's go to this side. Whoops. I'll zoom in on that. So now we're dead face there. Let's see if this works better. Let's see if this works better. Let's put that back on cut. In theory, that should work. Whoa, baby, that's not what I was expecting. Let's go back on that. That was interesting. I don't know why I did that. Uh, probably might, what might be a better idea for me to do here, now that I think of it, is to detach that poly completely from that. Wait a minute, did that... Uh, let me go back one more time. I'm hoping I didn't do what I thought it did. Just a second here. Why isn't it highlighting that? Is that a separate piece, too? Uh, let's see here. No. Nope. It's weird. It wasn't showing that as white right here on this corner. That's why I was wondering. So, yeah, that's still one piece. Got the cutout here for the door. Yeah, so what I'll do, I'll highlight this poly and detach it. This might be a little bit easier. So that's uh, object 116, just to take a reference to that. What the freak? What was that all about? What the heck? That was totally unexpected. Where'd the rest of my box go? Hey! Um, hello? I didn't have the snaps on here. Why didn't it do that, though? Um, what the heck? Huh. Why in the heck did it do that? I don't understand that. Where'd the rest of my box go? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, hello. I won't even go back. Can I redo? Oh, you dirty rat, you. You gotta be kidding me. Well, that stinks. I don't know why I did that. Uh, I'm going to have to go back to my autosaves here and see, because I didn't save that prior to. I didn't expect that to happen, that's for sure. It completely erased all that by when I tried to detach that. I have no idea why. That's the first for me. Uh, let me check my uh, autosaves here. 
Give me a second here. Um, go to here. Auto desk, auto back. What's the last save? Actually, it's not too far back. It did a back up here about a minute ago. Yep, six seventeen. Okay, so let me. Uh, I'm gonna close this out and reopen this. I have no idea why I did that though. Something went freaky there. All right, let me go ahead and reset this. Do not save that. I'm gonna open up this back up here. Let's see if I can navigate to that. And this is one thing I do like about um, having the autosave. I have it save every 15 minutes. So um, I do have the ability of being able to go back. If I forget to save or if something like that happens, I do have the um, autosaves. So in this case, I didn't go too far back. This was like a minute before that happened. <laughs> that was kind of convenient. Um, don't know why. Hold on. Hmm. Let's continue on that. Oh, wait a minute. So that's probably not the one I want then. So I might have to go back a little bit further. Okay. That wasn't far enough, obviously. Okay, cool. No problem. I'll reset that. That was still including that error, I guess, in that part of the model. Alright, so let's uh, open up this other one here then. The, probably only one thing I need to check is just those silos. Make sure that should be already done. This is this one's going back about six minutes. Just prior to that. All right, so let's go to here. Auto back. Yeah, this one's going back six minutes from that one I just tried there. I don't know why all this is coming up though. Those textures should be in there. I'll have to check my material stuff. Check it out to make sure. Yeah, this is before that happened. Uh, so it must not have all the materials applied, apparently. Alright, let me... Uh... Oh, this is going to stink. This one must not have the textures applied. I'm going to material editor. Oh, this is gonna suck. Are you freaking kidding me? So it doesn't have the materials applied. It's got the names, but not the materials are not there. Oh my god, what the heck man? Alright, so because it's still got the names here, I still might be able to go ahead and apply the textures. Looks like I just have to tell it where they are. That won't be too bad then. Yeah. I think I can do that real quick. So let's go... Where is it grabbing those from? It's applying the DDSs. Huh. Okay, so the fact that they're not in the auto back. Let's go. Yeah, just reapply these detectors real quick. Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Here. 19. Right here. Let's go to. Is that in maps? Textures? Co op. Uh, let's see, silos, or uh, catwalk on, sorry. Catwalk on this one. Catwalk 
Okay. Yeah, so the fact that it's still got the names from the materials here, I just gotta tell where they are. That's the only downside, I suppose. Uh, concrete Tower 2. Yeah, it's not gonna show me. I forgot which one was 2. This one's Concrete Tower 2. There's that one. Tower one. I just got to repoint to where these are anyway. As far as the auto back didn't want to maintain, I guess, <coughs> where the textures are actually located. Silos mat. Silos diffuse. There's that one. This is where it helps too, I guess, if things like this happen. And having reasonable names, I guess, to your textures. Especially to apply, um, you know, the material name I guess that you apply in the material editor itself, and have it coincide with what the name of your texture is. It's probably a good reason, I guess, a, a good uh, um, good thing that just did happen. So the names of these materials that I have in material editor it still have those applied. I know exactly which type of texture needs to go to that. Also, by looking at here, it's you know, shows that they're coincides with that material name. It's just that I'm having to, uh, for whatever reason, I'm having to tell it where to grab it <laughs> again uh, by using that uh, that auto back as far as the backed up copy. So this one's the gas station. Okay, that's putting it in there. So this one must not have had nothing. Okay, this one is the buildings. Accessories, cool. Going to here. Buildings ACC. Oh, this one had the diffuse normal and specular. So I'll do the diffuse. Alright, this one here I'm gonna have to go into the maps. Oh, and they are all over there. So we got the normal. Did I not supply that? I guess not. So at least the normal I did. Okay. Supply the normal. That one there. Okay. So that one's good. This one is the Concrete Tower 03. So I just have to do with some rebuilding of the texture locations is all in this backed up copy. Not too big of an issue. A little bit of a hiccup, I guess, in the get along there, but not too terrible. Uh, concrete 3. And again, really is helping, I guess, in this part of it is the fact that I've got the material names coinciding, I guess, with the name of the actual texture. So it's kind of easy to go, go through and just reapply. So this is Feed Mill Diffuse. It's that one. And we're, we're going to redo this here eventually, but for now we're just going to put the one that we have prior to the one we've got saved. Okay. Now, what this one should do is apply... Okay, these are still undone, I gotcha. So I should be able to do this. Is it not? Yep, that should be the texture. Um, why is it not applying a texture to that though? So I got that selected. Tell me the mapping is gone on that. It can't be. That's not good. Try another one here. It's not wanting to apply the texture.
texture to that. Why is that? That's not good. So if we got mapping on there, it should be applying the texture to that. Maybe if I reload this here a second. Let's see here. So if I go into here, let's do a reload. That's not working either. What the heck? That's the texture. Whoa. That's the texture. Okay, why well, are you not applying to that model though? Huh. I don't like that. It's not good. Hmm. Okay, let me see what's with this one. Galvanized. So we should have... Green dryer galvanized. That's in here. The fuse. I don't know why this one's not applying though. It's showing the texture. I don't know why it's, well, it's not applying though. That's interesting. That's the right texture for now. That's worrying me. I don't know why that doesn't want to apply it to the model. Little hiccup and again along here. Alright, let me bring back <clears throat> some of these hidden items here. I'm gonna see if those textures are applying, because if they're not, there's a bigger issue. It's on hide. Let's get um, let's bring back these silos. Yeah, see it's not applying those either. Silos. Let's see what's going on with this stuff here. Where are my silos at? Catwalk. Tower. Here's the silos. Yeah, see, that's applying. That's what I wanted to see. That's what should be happening with these here and they're not. Not the good, not the good. Yeah, see, all those are applying. That's good. Hmm. Definitely a little hitching to get along. So, so far all the materials are applying this, uh, properly against everything else, just not the feed mill stuff here, so... And especially those silos on the feed mill, so i got to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure why on the backup it didn't uh, maintain, I guess, the location of those materials. Material names and all that stuff are really need to be just not the... Uh, so let me go ahead and bring back the majority of this stuff here. Well, let me group some of this up. Um, yeah, let's group these up. Deal with these here in a minute. So we'll do feed mill silos. Group that. Okay, I'll group that up just to kind of clear up some of the item list here. Um, all right, what's this bin? That is that there. Okay, the majority of this should have been already uh, the feed mill stuff, so I'm gonna get that. Stairs, stairs. I'm gonna group this all up in the feed mill. 
this for now. Group that in the female. And again, all I'm trying to do is clean up the. So I'm going to bring some of this other stuff back and get the textures applied, see so if make sure that they're uh, applying correctly. So I'm going to select all that, and I don't need this the ground plane. Saddle items. Okay, that's pretty good. Actually, I don't need this box for it either. I just want to get these applied here. So this one should be yeah. What was what now? <laughs> no, I just got to remember. I think three. Okay, well, where's the three? This one's three. Three, I think, was the. Oh my goodness, I couldn't even remember now. Let me open that real quick. Let me get to the. Oh my goodness, stop. Freaking mouse. Alright, let's go. This backtrack in here a little bit. Just give me a minute. Uh, over here, that. Um, maps. Texture, so I just got to remind myself as far as what uh, each of these textures were. So three. Okay, yeah, that's the interior pits and whatnot. Okay. Two. That's that one. That's what I. That's what I needed to know. Okay, so let's go. That's uh, this one here. So two needs to go on that one. That's one. Here's two. So that needs to go on here. Okay. This one should be one. Concrete one. Oh, I hate when it does that. That artifacting. Alright, so we'll do this one. It's also one. Cool. Uh, also one. This one I think is also one. Cool. This one here is going to be the grain dryer. That's the galvanized. That apply. Um, <laughs> hard to tell. I think it is. Instead of curiosity, let's do this. Okay. All right. Cool. So that's applied. It's all grain dryer stuff. This should be concrete one. Cool. I think. Yeah, so I already applied the catwalk. That's good. Gas station's already good. Now I just need the interior pit. Which should be these here. Looks like it's already on there, but. That's gonna be this one. Okay. And where's the other one here? Yep, looks like that's already on there. Let's go on to this. That. Right there. So that would be this one. Cool. That's all that's already applied. So far, it looks like we're good. The only thing that's not applying appropriately is on our feed mill, which is not good. We need to check that out. I don't... I wouldn't think we would lost the mapping on it, but... Uh, So let's go to this. Everything else is good, so I'm good with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the rest of this. So I'll do 
do that, that, that. Let's hide all this. Whoops. I don't want to highlight that, though. Let's hide some of this stuff and see now. LW confirm the textures are good. Alright, hide all that. Oops, just a couple things here. Okay, let's see here. Let's ungroup this. We gotta see what's going on with the texturing for that. Oh, we still got a couple of ladders. There, now we only have the female. Um, ungroup. Okay, let's try and apply it this way. For some reason in the sphere itself, it's not showing the texture. I'm not sure why. Let's try it this way. Feed mill diffuse. See, it's not sh Oh, there it goes, now it's showing. Okay, so just a matter of repointing that, I suppose. Now it looks like we're good. Alright, so we are good. Awesome. Yeah, so it does have it applied. I'm going to unwrap those and just confirm that it still has the what we did previously there. It should. But I'll just uh, ungroup these real quick. Silos. And we'll apply an unwrap to it just to confirm. Yep. So that should be good. So those locations, when we move that all over, that's still in that position there. So that's good. That's all I wanted to know. Alright, so let's collapse that back down. Collapsed all. Now what I'll have to do is resave the scene based on here. I have no idea why it did that with that when I tried to do that detach of that poly. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. But just in case it does, we'll go ahead and save this before we do that. So I had to backtrack there, I guess, a little bit just to get a reestablish, I guess, our scene, but not too bad. Could have been worse. Um, let's do a group of this. And we do feed mill silos. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and save this scene. Save as. No, not there. Let's go here. Um, ID. Go here, that. And we want to save over this one right here. Cool. Excellent. All right, now, <laughs> now that we've got that saved, and we can have. If, we, if it does that again, I'll be able to refer to that one and not have to go through all that noise again. I don't know how or why that happened that way, though, as far as to try to detach that poly. I don't know if it's because I tried to uh, apply that cut uh, there initially. I'm not 100% sure. I guess that's what I'm going to attribute it to, at least anyway. Alright, so this piece here... Is an edible poly, so I want to select this poly. Now that I got that saved, at least I can detach as an object. That's what I wanted it to do in the first place. So the fact that I, the only thing I can think of is because I had tried to apply that cut, there must have been still something going on, I guess, with that piece there when I tried to detach it. And that's why it chunked all that out of there because it did it just what I was hoping it was going to do in the first place. So now I got this piece separated. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. So now with that separated, I should be able to make a cut um, on this. 
Uh, might even be able to apply a swift loop this way. So with that detached, let's see if let's do, let's do the shift S. That's what I got my shortcut at. Um, that's not giving me anything on top of that. Shift S. That didn't give me nothing. Okay. Might be too simple of a shape. Usually, uh, with the swift loop, uh, the way that'll work better is if you've got some dimension to it. The fact that it's just one poly. Sometimes the shift, uh, the swift loop won't work. So it's like, unless I had to say, like, if I was trying to do, like I showed before, I was trying to cut it, like, um, cross-sectionally, um, that's usually where the swift loop comes into play, because you, basically what the swift loop would do would give you a clean cut from one side of a, you know, cross-cut of a, of an object to the other without being, you know, crooked. Uh, the swift loop will give you that straight cut. So the fact that I'm only trying to do it to one poly, um, that's not a practical applica application, I guess, to uh, what we're trying to do here. So what I'll do is my initial idea was just to cut from this vert over that edge, and then I can always line that that vertex where I cut it. If it's not straight, I can line it up with the, the Z uh, vertex location on, on this corner. So let's try that option again. Um, we'll go cut. And I'm going to put this on vert and edge snap. We'll try this again here and see if this works. So if we we'll go like this. I don't like that where that started. The fact that it's not wanting to snap over here, that's what's bugging me. I don't know why it doesn't want to snap to that corner there at all. It wants to snap there. But it still doesn't want to cut either. That's weird. That's not normal, usually. Hmm. Why doesn't that want to cut there? Uh, usually by applying, you know, detaching your poly that you want to cut, that'll usually go ahead and allow you, I guess, that... Because you're isolating just that piece that you want to cut, right? Uh, I could probably try it from the other way as far as the... Um, cut from this way and go to that corner. So if it doesn't work one way, uh, in most cases it'll sometimes work the other way. So let's try to do it from this edge here. Hold on, let me zoom in. Yeah. See so the fact that I'm not getting. Man, it's crazy. Let me see if that'll work. There we go. So we did. So I did it for just from the other way instead of that. Now what I can do is I can line it up um, to the proper height. I can snap with that cut, at least being in there, and it'll create a vert. Let's turn that off for a second, though. I'll turn the verts on here, and let's see if that did snap. I got this in orthographic, so this. Vertex, and it looks like it created a new vertex there, I think. Hmm. Why is it not giving me a... What the heck? Hmm. So far it's not giving me the result that I was hoping for, I guess as far as it be able to select that vert so I'm thinking what it probably did when I caught it is it didn't snap it to that vertex in that corner alright let me do this I'm going to go ahead and hide this part which is box 07 so we'll hide that and see what we got going on here I got a strange feeling it probably created an additional vert here. It's hard to tell though. Why is it not on the selector? That's weird. I don't like that. Huh. Why is it not wanting to select that vert? Hello? I zoom too far in. All right, I'm gonna have to assume right. 
I got a feeling there's two different verts there now. One from the cut, and one that was already there. So to confirm, I'm gonna look at this. Okay, so it does look like there is only one vert there. So when I cut it there, it actually snapped into that corner. Sometimes it won't snap to the corner when you cut. A lot of times it'll put another vert there that's not pinned to the <clears throat> the corner that was there. I guess you can say prior to the cut. That's what I wanted to confirm. So it does look like there is the same vert there as far as I can tell. Uh, usually on orthographic, Try it from this way. It won't let me uh, zoom in enough, I guess, to confirm if there's more than one. Let me try to zoom in. Yeah. It's not zooming in enough, so I'm just going to have to assume that's only one vert there. I don't like not being able to confirm that, but I'm going to have to assume it did snap it when I cut it there. It snapped to that original vert that was there uh, prior to the cut. Okay, so now from this, what I can basically do, um, assuming that, is take this Z on that corner and apply it to this on this end. Yeah, because it didn't go all the way to the edge. See, and I got an additional vert here, it looks like. Um, is that the right level? Let me see here. I think that vert, let me check it here. I don't know where that vert came from, but um, let's see. Let me paste that one from there. Holy macro, all right. Yeah, that was way down there. Okay, so basically what I did, no, that's not right either. I can already tell that's not right. Where in the heck? Copy that one again. So this Z. I don't know what the heck that just did there. Paste that. Where in the heck? Did I cut it that crooked? <laughs> Alright, so basically that vert is this level with this one. It might be just my eyes, but I guess maybe it is. <laughs> it's probably because this one's still off here. So I'm seeing what it did when I did that cut. It snapped to that um, that uh, line here that I had the blue line here for this cut instead of going all the way to this edge. But yet it still put a vertex there. That's kind of crazy. All right, so what I'll do is take this vert. I got the right one there. And snap, vert snap that to here. Now that I know that's in the right spot, that way I know this is straight now. Cool. That was a little bit of work, but I think we got it. Now that'll give us a, a material separation between the plywood wood being in this part, and this will be our cinder block down below that line. Okay. A little bit of work, but we needed to have that separation of the material anyway. Okay, so let's um, unhide. That was box 07. Bring the rest of that back, and I'll go ahead and collapse that back down. So we'll take this and this, and recollapse. We'll put that back together. So do collapse, collapse selected. And now that should be bo back to box 07. Uh, what I'm going to do right away, I've been getting into the habit of doing this, is just reset the uh, X form. Because anytime you do uh, adjustments like that, as far as to detach pieces and reattach them and such, not only does the um, the pivot for it get off center, but so does the uh, X form. So I'll go into the X form here and reset that right away too. Reset selected. 
there. So we know that's good. Collapsed all. There. Now we know we're good. Both the pivot and the X-form as we progress forward. Now we can get into texturing this bad boy. Let's um, go into the material. And we want this feed mill. I'm going to make sure all these are up. Lock. I just want to put these up at their uh, parent level. Yeah. Uh, saddles match. Station. Okay. Buildings. It's YouTube Music. Upgrade. Download the app today Email. and get a trial of Music Premium okay. on us. Restrictions apply. Of course, restrictions always apply. All right. So feed mill mat. That's the one we want to apply to this. So let's do what? There we go. So that initial mapping is going to be a little wonky until we get it UV unwrapped anyway. Yep, that is still on Techno X. Realty Freeze. Nice. On the playlist there. Okay, so now let's uh, apply the unwrap. And open up the UV editor. Texture. Uh, so something we didn't do yet is to save um, our texture. I can close these out now. Now that I confirmed uh, all those materials. I don't need this anymore. Nope. I'll leave that for now. That wire, I do not need anymore. Oh. Okay, that I might use. Alright, so what we didn't do, I want to save this. I think I already did, but I just want to make sure I save this again. That's a PSD. Layer template. And then I'll go ahead and layers, merge all, flatten this down into a uh, new file, save as. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into our textures folder here. So I'm going to do that as a DDS. That's going to be a feed mill diffuse. Okay, so we need DTX1 and generate mint maps. So initially that texture is going to go away here. I'll have to reapply it, reload it. That's usually normal. Yep. I just have to go into it here and reload. There we go. That's usually normal. Okay. Now with our new texture applied, our texture that we saved and applied, we'll be able to go in here. And update the map. That's the one we want. Cool. Now we can start mapping this thing here based on our polys. And I think where we're going to start is right here where we cut it. Um, wait a minute. What the heck? Why is that not? Why is that counting it as one poly? That's not right. That should be two separate polys there. Okay, what's up with that? Uh, that's interesting. That should be counting that as two separate polys. Definitely is not though. What the heck? Let me see what that looks like in the editor here. Well, that's crazy. It shows the cut there. 
Let's do a quick planer. I wonder why it doesn't let me select that poly separate. That's interesting. That's not what I want at all. I want to be able to separate, uh, select those separately. Um, let's see here. Vertex mode here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't understand why it's not select let me select that as a separate poly. Still including it as one poly. That's not what I want. Not what I want at all. Um Huh. Well, that's a bummer. Uh, so that's not a true cut. I guess as far as to make that a separate poly, as I was wanting. So. Mm. All right, let's do this. I got an idea here. Just collapse that. So what I'll probably have to do... Uh, convert to edible poly. See if it shows a separate this way. See, it's still showing as one. That's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. That is super weird. All kinds of weird stuff happening in the day. So the fact that I cut that, it's not separating those polys out. That's a new one to me. That's definitely a new one to me. Okay, so... Uh... This is being so difficult. Let me see. Just looking at an option here. What can we do here? It shouldn't be an issue with it not being. All right, let me hide some of this here just to kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so that's. Uh... Hide that. hate to cut it again. The only other thing I could probably think of is to do a, a boolean cut with a plane, but that might not be effective either. Hmm. I'm going to try that though, I guess. I'm going to take a plane. Oh, lordy, 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 lordy. I don't know why this is being so difficult. Let me push through this though. Let's make a plane. Oops. Take some of these out of here. I don't need all that. Alright. Lay this down like so.
right, so probably what I could do, with that being at zero, I'm going to apply that to C uh, based on that vert. The only thing I don't want to do is cut the rest of that, so I'm going to probably have to re uh, de detach that, so I'm only getting that one side, as far as that. I don't want the whole box. Alright, so... Uh, let's see here. I can re-detach this, re-detach this, like so. So go like that. Back to the plane. The size of the plane doesn't matter, I just want to get it cut. Now I want to put this at that Z. Let's convert this to another poly. Now on this, I want to get that vertex. Let's see here, and apply that to the plane. All right, that's the level I want to cut. Ooh, ready then. So, this piece. Great. Compound. Boolean. Alright. So, we got that piece. Uh, we want to do a cut, refine. Pick out brand B. Alright. Well, it did what I think it was supposed to do. Yeah, so it did make some cuts there. So let's see if it separated that out. That was what I was going for. So let's do convertible poly. Polygon. There we go. So I had to do the boolean cut. So obviously the the other cut that I did there didn't work. But basically what I did was I just recut it doing a boolean at that same level. Just to ensure, I guess it is. So we got a lot more cuts in here than I really wanted. Uh, that's usually what happens with the boolean, but I guess it won't be too bad. It'll be all right. At least we got that cut the way we wanted. I was first be able to separate that material. Okay. So with that done, we'll go ahead and recollapse this down. That was a little bit interesting. I should, it should have worked, I guess, with that um, that cut method there by doing it the previous way, but no problem. It's basically just taking a sharper knife and being able to cut through that <laughs> through that poly again the same way. Make sure it cut properly. All right, so we gotta reattach these two. Uh, so we'll collapse these back together. There we go. Alright, so once again, effect pivot, recenter that. Is that right? Okay. And then reset the X form. Yep, so that's what we want to see on the X form as far as the nice bounding box around. Yep, just like that. So it's good. So we'll go ahead and collapse that down. We don't want to see it on a wonk or anything like that. Cool. Good deal. So now we can go ahead and let's try to map this again. So let's do uh, convert to bettable poly. And I'll go ahead and bring back which optics was that? It's this one here, I believe. Yeah, that's fine. Now, get back to business here. Unwrap. We had to go back a couple different times just to kind of get what we need done here. So there we go. So now what I should be able to do is like that poly. That's what I wanted to be able to do in the first place. Uh, go into here 
and I'm gonna filter out there now I can I don't even need to do a planar map or anything like that it's already the way it needs to be and I want to put plywood on this so I'm gonna put this up in here this is where a white plywood is let's span this out a little bit yeah that'll work Was that two out of three? Oh, extracted. Ouch. Scold that song gun, huh? <laughs> Still got that scold option. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> now we've got the plywood applied there. Um, actually, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I might want it going the other way. Let me see here. That might be just the way I've got the texture oriented. Yep, it is, okay. So it's going this way as opposed to that way as far as the grain. Uh, that could be a matter of just turning. I can adjust the texture itself. So you can kind of see it's painted plywood. You can see the knots and whatever. Um, I could probably rotate that texture so that it's the other way. In fact, let me do that. Back this up. We'll go to our white plywood. Here. And we'll copy that. Edit paste this new image. So you can see that's uh, our white plywood. Um, I see how I did that now. Alright, let's do this. We'll do an image. I don't want to stretch that. So, yeah, so I kind of show what I mean here. So do it to the left. I don't want to stretch it this way because that's going to look. It's going to stretch the knots or whatever. I don't want to do that. That's going to look ugly. Um, so probably what I'll do. Um, let me see here. Let's copy this. Edit, paste is new selection. We're gonna go this way. Yeah, I just want to get it oriented this way as opposed to the way I had it. Something like that. And we'll go ahead and cut it off this way. There. So all we're doing is just getting it going this direction as opposed to that direction in the grain. Okay, now, just to give it some variation, <clears throat> I'll copy this half of the texture. And we'll paste it in here. That way we're not getting the same knots I guess across the, the texture there anyway. Yeah, so you just get some variation there anyway. Oh, I guess I might have cut that down a little too short there. Whoops. Um, let me do a clone brush on this real quick. That shouldn't be too bad. Let's just do this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's put this on too.
Yeah, that should work. I could paint a straight line, I'm telling you. I just cut it a little bit too short, I guess, when I uh, trimmed it down height wise there. I just gotta add back to it a little bit. That's kind of the beauty, I guess, of having these in layers, too. There. So we got that. Um, just got that little bit on the end here. Uh, so let's grab another little chunk here. And we'll just scab it on the end here. Just got that just that little bit of strip in between here. That should be pretty good. Cut it off that way. Cut it off that way. Cool. Now we got it going. The grain going this way as opposed to that way. That'll work. <clears throat> um. Cool. So let's do a layers merge all flatten. I'll save it as a new DDS. I want to remember to save this as a template too. Alright, so let's do update map. Ah crap, I gotta reload it in the uh, material editor first. There we go. And then update in here. Cool, so this should be, should be already updated. Yep, you can see that green's going this way now. Now if we look at our model, you can see that grain on here going up and down. That's what I wanted. Good deal. Alright, now let's get the blocks. So now we'll highlight those polys. This is still in a separate piece here? Yeah. I want to do that probably separate. Uh, that's going to be like a door. Um, it is a sliding door, so I don't know if I just want to put sheet metal on that. That probably work better. I'll put the sheet metal texture on that part. Okay, so what do we got here? What in the world's going on here? Let's do a quick planner. There we go. And this one we want the white blocks onto it. Orientation is good. Got the door the same way as we do on the model, so we'll just leave it just like that. Or is it facing the same way and all that. So we'll just put the blocks on here. Hopefully you can get the sense of why we needed that separation uh, of the poly in between the two materials. Between where the plywood is and now where the blocks are. And now you can really see that variation. We can adjust that um, down the road, I guess, as far as if we don't want this color white in the plywood as opposed to the blocks. But um, at least you, you get an idea of... Download the app today and get a trial of Music Premium on us. Restrictions apply. Of course the restrictions apply. They always apply. Okay. A little over two hours in the stream. It's going pretty good. We had a little bit, uh, some hiccups there, but I think we recovered pretty nicely. Honestly. Sometimes that'll happen, I guess, though. But it gives you somewhat of an idea of <clears throat> if you deal with those types of things, if those types of things happen, as far as how you uh, recover. Alright, so we're going to put the roof on here. We do got the sheet metal. 
Uh, I can also put the sheet metal on the door. Okay, so let's do that. Let's grab this. Alright, let's do a quick planer on that one. Okay, put that in that area. And now we'll just put this where the sheet metal is. So we got our plywood, sheet metal, and then the concrete blocks. As far as all white, all in the same area. So as far as same area, you know, top to bottom, I guess as far as layered, and that part of the texture anyway. So this is where we got our sheet metal. Now, if we <clears throat> if you really wanted to get picky with how the uh, there's our sheet metal. If we really wanted to get picky as far as the scaling of these blocks, you want to get them more realistic because obviously this is a little bit big. Um, we could play around with that later on, but at least just to get some texture onto the, the model for now. Just so we have something established as far as what we want where. Um, we could play around with the scale on the texture itself as far as to get it where we need it to be. So what we can do, and we've shown this before, as far as like you can make a center block that is the eight inches, you know, the eight inches tall by, um, I forget how wide, you know, make the, make a block and then do a cutout um, into the model to, to make that size. And then you can be able to get a wire of that, that block that's cut into the model and then just scale your texture based on that cutout of the block, I guess if that makes sense. And then we can just adjust that in the texture itself, not on the model. So basically it would come down to as far as like what is the standard size of a cinder block. Um, 8 inches by 10, I think it's, I forget again. I always have to look at, <laughs> in fact let me check here. Uh, I got some concrete blocks here. Let's, um, let's open up another tab here. Let's go to standard concrete block. I want to say it's 8 by 16. But we're going to find out here in a second. Standard concrete block size is... Uh, 8 inches by 16 inches, yeah. And, yeah, so it's 8 inches. Yeah, here's the dimensions here. That's not what I expected. Really? So, taking me down the rabbit hole. Anyway, it says it right here, so it's 8 by 16. So if you wanted to make a block, just for example. And we've shown this before, so it's a lot of, a lot of it's a review. Uh, so let's create a box. I'll just lay a box down here really quick. Just in rough scale. And we want an 8 by 16. So let's be 8 inches deep, 16 by 8 tall, right? Um, so if we get the dimension here. We're in meters in uh, max here. So let's go, let's put in our convert conversion here so we'll do uh, inches to meters or either way it doesn't matter inches to meters meters to inches and we need 16 inches for example we need this meters apply that to the width here Um, that's not what I expected. And then we got 8 inches. That's one way anyway. 8 inches would be half of that, I would imagine. Yep, so copy that. And that would be... Let's do it this way. It should be the other two directions anyway. So we got that as well as this way. So that would be the standard size of a cinder block. So <clears throat> if you wanted to create a cutout, 
into any corner, I guess, of this building. You know, as far as the corner, say, for example, just leave it right there. Create a cutter for this. Cut that into the model, and that's what how, you can really see the difference as far as what we need to size this down to. As far as those cinder blocks. So, whether or not I'll do that, I'll probably leave that there just as a reference. As far as how much that needs, that texture needs to be adjusted. But that was what we need. So we could just do a cutout based on this size here that we make as a cutter. Cut that into the model, and then actually we'll have that in the, the wire of the model. That little area is not going to matter as far as just to have that little bit of a cutout. Uh, but then you can size up your texture based on that cutout, based on the wire of the model. Let me spit that out as a wire. So I'll leave that in there as a model, just to kind of remind me as far as how off the scale of that texture is of the cinder block for now. But at least we're getting some texture onto this thing now. Make it look like something. Alright, so let's go back into this. Um, wait a minute, what happened to, okay, never mind. Polygon, now we'll get this one to do cinder block on that one as well. Yeah, so we know this scaling is going to be off. So that can be adjusted later in the texture. Okay, so let's, um, planer, there we go. Alrighty then, where's our cinder block? Cinder block's right there. So we can at least get our uh, our polys and our textures where we want them on in our overall texture here, and then just adjust the texture as far as the scaling of the cinder blocks afterwards. Because we'll, we'll have all the uh, wire or the UV template of the everything that we have mapped. And we'll, we'll better be able to, uh, but I can get it at least lined up. Yeah, so see how this isn't lined up here. I can get that lined up at least anyway. So once we adjust in the texture and just rescale the size of the blocks, then it'll look a lot better. Yeah, I see what I did now. So I got to bring this one down more. Is that just one poly? This is just one poly. And bring it down this way. Now for something like this that has a unique pattern, as far as to get it to line up, I could probably grid snap of this side to that side. That would probably make more sense, I guess, to make sure that those lines from one side to the next are lined up. But as far as so far how it's it's making that look like a full block, so we got that half here, making it look like a full on this side. So so far, even though the scaling's off, um, as far as the way the mortar joints are lining up, that's that's correct. So and if any case, we can just keep it upscale until we can get those joints, I guess, to line up a little bit better, a little bit easier on the eyes that way, and then we can adjust the texture for that based on that mapping on the texture itself, like I said, later on. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to go filter, unfilter. And let's see if we can't line up these. Yeah, let's see how these don't line up. Uh, I'm going to go into vertex. Go to here, and I'm going to put the grid snap on. And just snap these together and line these all up. This one doesn't want to line up. Ah, so that was doing it to me last week there too. Another episode. As far as the grid snap. Not nah, wanting to so that one's good. Let's try this one again. Oh, so this one's not wanting to snap for some reason. Oh, see, it's wanting to snap to the actual grid, which is what it's designed to do in actuality. Is to snap to that outside grid uh, to where the textures 
confined to as far as these blue lines. That's basically what the grid snap is supposed to do, but it, it does tend to try and average. Sometimes it's just a matter of zooming in or zooming out further to get that to snap properly. Come on, baby. It's not a perfect science. You dirty rat. Hate when it doesn't want to snap. Alright, that's gonna be good there. That should be nice and lined up. Oh, we got this corner here. Yeah, this one's not wanting to snap either. There we go. Sometimes, like I said, it's just a little bit of zoom in or out, and I'll. It'll kick in as far as the grid snap. And you can tell when it is because it'll it'll physically snap. You'll be able to tell it and feel it snap. And usually once you get it there, just leave it alone. Because <laughs> you keep messing with it, it's you know, trying to get it get it perfect or whatever, it's it'll just make it worse. So Alright, so now we got that snap, so we know that those lines are nice and lined up now. So that's that much at least anyway. Uh, I'm gonna put some sheet metal under this door. So let's highlight that. And we'll probably have to do a quick planer. There we go. And what I can do, even though I've got this cut out here, I can still line it right up with this opening here. So we still have the option of being able to put a different texture on that. Wait, that's on the... Uh, I can at least size this up based on this opening here. And then just put it on the sheet metal. The sheet metal part of the texture. I'm going to turn this grid snap off though. So all I'm doing is just getting it lined up this way. Loosely. Alright, so now what I can do is just move this up into the sheet metal. And I can put it pretty much anywhere where the sheet metal is. It doesn't act really going to matter. Again, I can probably always move that later on. But at least we'll have sheet metal on it. So it kind of gives us uh, that effect of having a, a door here. Now, this is just going to be makeshift for now. Uh, as far as a placeholder. I just... What I'm basically... It's got sheet metal on the door, you can kind of tell on there, but it's got a rail on it and such. So I'll have to add all those aspects um, later on. I'll get all those little finer details I guess applied to it later on. But you can kind of get the idea here as far as it's got like a sheet metal door that slides on a track. So we got that in there at least. So we got our plywood applied on that part. We got all of our cinder block on that part. Um, and I'm just moving on to the rest of the building. Uh, let's see if we take this back. We got all that. So let's put it on this here. So we got more block here. Uh, mostly on the above parts as far as like the roof peaks and such. And on this part of the building it's all plywood. Painted plywood. So the cinder block's only on the bottom portion. So there is still some cinder block on this part. But all this here is going to be all plywood. As far as this blue and the green and such. But this is all cinder block. Okay. So we'll just get that applied. Um. I'll get to that later. Uh, 
I think I'm going to do this part here next. So we got, I'm going to keep the unwrap on this one here just in case I need to adjust something, but I shouldn't need to, but I'll keep it there just, just in case. So on this one here, we want to apply that plier texture to it. Like so. And it's going to be funky until we get it mapped. It's to be expected. So we got sheet metal on all these roof parts. This is probably got, this is plywood. Um, sheet metal all through here, and this is all going to be cinder block. And then it'll be sheet metal on this door part, just like I did over here. And that's going to be, like I said, this all place holder, uh, at least for now, until we get this all through scale and all that good stuff. But at least it gets to get some texture onto it, just, just to get an idea of what our layout of our wireframe is going to be on our texture. That's basically all we're trying to establish at this point. Get some texture on this thing. Alright, so with the texture applied to that, I'm going to open up uh, the unwrap, apply that, open the editor up, texture applied, let's uh, expand this out a little bit, and let's go with these polys here. Cool. We don't have any uh, separation in texture, so this is all going to be blocks, as far as the white blocks. So that's all. That's good, just the way it is. Do a quick planer, filter out the rest. So it's got that cutout for the door. Okay. So we'll put this over the blocks. Oops. Making sure I'm not getting into the sheet metal. I want to keep it in the, the blocks. All the more reason I put that uh, mortar joint just on that bottom edge there so it can add some separation uh, to the other parts of the texture. So the fact that I've got this concrete in there, I didn't want that to blend in too much. Makes it a little bit easier, I guess, to be able to pinpoint where the... Uh, poly I just need to go on the texture okay, so there's that now we're probably not going to get that to line up I guess with uh, this one at all uh, simply because well let me see here I don't want to speak too soon we could probably get these all to line up we'll just have one extra row it looks like I'm sending blocks on this part now we can confirm this on the pictures here do they actually line up now <laughs> keeping in mind we don't have the texture scaled I guess like that so we got plenty more rows it's not it's more than one row we probably got uh, three or four rows I guess above where this one is so this line here we got like three or four rows above that so the fact that we don't have our texture scaled on our model it's gonna make it a lot more so we probably do have the three or four rows I guess above here but what we can do at least is trying to get these to line up you know as far as all these seams these mortar joints we can get those to line up so that again once we apply the texture uh, adjust the texture i guess based on what we map here it'll be more rescaled you know more to scale i guess as far as what we showed our the size of our actual block later on so let's see if we can't get those lined up should be possible so let's go like this we'll have to come we'll have to go either up or down let's see if I can get this all in here so let's move this over here bring this over here so what we're trying to do is we're getting try to get these mortar joints lined up all right so let's go to Polygon, select all that, and what I'll do is I'll turn it F2. So I still got it highlighted, I'm just turning the toggling off in the viewport here so you can actually see it better in comparison to the uh, UBW edit. I'm going to go here, so we'll probably see if we can move this down, so you can see how we're... 
We may not be able to. We're going to see how close we can get. Alright, so looks like the only way we get it to line up is if we went taller, which is not going to work. So we're going to get in the sheet metal. Um, Alright, maybe. Let me see if I go this way. As well as this way. Bugger. Hate when that happens. Yeah, so we don't have that much room in here. So in order to do that, we'd have to have more space, I guess, as far as... Uh, hmm... And we could probably do that in our texture. We still got this area to work with. Uh, so if we needed to, or even down here, what I would have to do, uh, I'm using this for something else as far as the silos. So I'd have to move that, say for example, if I wanted to make that block area, I guess a little bit, give it more room, I guess you could say. So what I'll do for now is at least just line this up within what we have here, and I'll have to adjust that later. Just be aware of the fact that it's going to need to be adjusted. I'll just line it up the best I can, like so, and it's just won't line up here for now. At least we know we got an idea as far as what needs to be adjusted there. <clears throat> as I've already said, there's going to be plenty of modifications to the texture, I guess, to accommodate what we what we need to get mapped the way we want it mapped on the model. All right, so on this door, I'll put the sheet metal in this one as well. Okay, go away, quick planer, and let me turn that on. So we'll get this lined up with the door. If only we're going to put it on the sheet metal instead of the cinder block. If I really want to get picky, I could do a grid snap on this here, but I'm not going to get super picky about that. I just want to get it, <clears throat> that opening kind of lined up somewhat, and then I'll just put that up here. Now, I've got the other door somewhere, like, in this area, so I'm just putting this above where that one is, is all. Again, that's that can always be adjusted later on, but just to get that sheet metal texture, I guess, on the door as a placeholder, just to kind of give it the sense that there's a door there. And it's just not a cinder block there. Alright, now let's get some sheet metal. Wait, we need plywood here. Let's do F2 just to make sure. Yeah. Get some plywood there. So we'll do quick planer. This one needs plywood. Let's filter the rest out. Okay, so we'll get some plywood in there. Good deal. Now we need some sheet metal on this part and this part. Um, let's see, do I want to do that all together? Probably do, because I want those rips to line up, at least on these two. Here it probably won't matter so much, but at least on these two. Yeah, I want those to line up all the way across with the ribs. So let's go like that, and we'll do quick planer, and we'll put this on the sheet sheet metal part. Will be found. Oh, just another link in the chain. Keep it dust together, right? 
That should work. Cool. Yeah, see now there's a lineup between these two there. And again, that's uh, probably more or less placeholder or less for now. Just to get some uh, sheet metal on there. As far as if we want to adjust that texture uh, later on, just like the, the blocks and everything else. At least we'll have that area defined on the texture to be able to say, you know, do I want that scaled down or up or whatever. Once we get it mapped. Okay, so we want to get the rest of this roof over here. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Get all that. Uh, yeah, let's do a quick planner on that. Yep, so we should be able to put that right across our sheet metal. Something I am considering here is I can probably shorten this up here because we do have that first part there, I guess, on this end here. So, in other words, if I go like this, I can see where that ends. Yeah. And I can just kind of line this up like that. And I can also see where that door is there, too. That'll work. Okay, so now we got our roof. So now in a way, it's, it's like the fact that it's got some color on it, not just the flat deco, uh, default placeholders, I guess that's so. Uh, we're still relatively at a placeholder uh, until we get the texture rescaled uh, based on the block size and so on, but it's starting to look like something now. Alright, what I'll do this point, and then we already got these done, I'm going to hide these, and then we'll work on this next. That's all got cinder block, white cinder block, let's get to that. Um, actually, I take that back, that's all plywood. That's got plywood there, okay. Yep. That's all plywood on that, okay. So we're going to put plywood on all that. As well as that side. So all these sides here that are still green, we'll put plywood on that. Inside we'll probably have plywood as well. We'll get the outside first though. <clears throat> Alright, so this is a separate piece. So I need to apply the texture. First off. Alright, and then we'll apply the unwrap. And we'll open up the editor. Cool. Now, what I want to confirm on this previous um, business over here, we got all everything uh, mapped there. I'm pretty sure we did. Let's just check this out here. Let's open up the editor. So we don't have anything that's outstanding. It doesn't look like it. So I don't have anything that's outside of... Um, whoops. Let's go into poly mode here. Yeah, so there's no, no other polys that are outside of this here. So everything's been accounted for in that other part of the model. Cool. I don't like to leave parts outstanding. So if there's uh, polys that necessarily were random or... Uh, Unaccounted for, I want to make sure to take care of those. <clears throat> Pardon me. Alright, let's see. Now, all this is plywood, so let's go ahead and grab. Oops. Grab these polys. Now, this has got um, a back base on that's probably why that's flickering. So the fact that I've got an inside part and an outside part. I think, let me check this really quick, I think there's, that's a separate 
model, I guess as far as the inside of that, right? So we have this poly here, and there's one, just a separate model on the inside of that. So that's a different model, so if I go like this. Yep, so I got that interior drive through so that's a separate piece. So I can hide that, just to kind of give an idea here. So, just take that away, so that clipping will go away. So the, because they're basically like those polys are right on top of each other, that's why it was, it was showing like it was clipping there. Okay, so getting right back into it here. Just gonna get that clipping out of there anyway. So let's go like this. Go into the UV editor. Oops, where did the texture go? Oh, okay. Hey, we we'll are it in. I gotta do a quick liner, and we'll filter the rest of that out. That's what's going on. Cool. Awesome. So this is all plywood. Let's stretch this out here. Get to fit right in here. That looks pretty good. I'll get this side. Yeah, the scaling for that definitely looks way too big. You look at the knots, you can see the knots in there, so probably what it'll do. Size and I can either select that from the that view there or the uh, right it right right from the uh, edit UVW here. So in order to get that scaled down, it's probably just going to come down to the texture itself. I'll probably again just like with the the blocks, I'll get this applied this way, and I can always scale down on the texture so that it's not quite so big, it doesn't show up so blown up I guess on the polys that I'm applying here. This is where I want the polys to be so I'll just adjust the texture uh, to that uh, to the polys once I get that wire. Yeah, we'll scale all that down. So I'll just leave it like that for now. Alright, so let's um, continue on here. So we'll go planer, quick planer on that one. Yeah, this will work. Yeah, so it's basically at this point, like I said, it's going to come down to get the polys situated within your texture, and then we'll adjust the texture based on where those polys are as far as the scaling and so on. Because um, you can definitely find yourself, you know, if you did the quick planner like that and the size of the poly that it necessarily generates in the first place, you might want to try to design your your texture based on the size of that. It's not always necessary to do that. Um, in some, a lot of cases, what you can get away with is put your polys where you want it to go on your texture, and this is a 2048 by 2048 uh, um, constraint. So what you can do is, based on what I'm doing here, as far as put your polys where you want them to be, as far as what where they fit nice and then just adjust your texture based on where those polys are. You can always export the wireframes for where your polys are at so you can accommodate the texture I guess to where those polys are. And that's eventually what we'll end up doing as we progress I guess on this uh, just as we've done in the, the whole model and this, uh, this, this whole uh, construct of this complex that we're trying to create here We've adjusted the texture to accommodate where we put the polys on the texture. That's what you'll always find yourself doing. Okay, so now we want to get this end. Like so. Alright, so we probably want to do a quick planer on that one as well. And probably what I can do here... 
Uh, one thing I want to do is flip this that way. And turn this back on. And we can line this one up. We can even go so far as to grit snap. And this one to the previous one we got here. That way we know they're lined up the same. And we can either make this a little bit smaller or bigger, depending on which way you want to go as far as to be able to grid snap. Try not to get it. You don't need to get it like dead on to it. In fact, it's a little bit better when you're considering the grid snap is to leave it a little bit short. Either go long or go short. That way, when you come into the grid snap, you've got something to, you know, point to there. So let's go vertex. Like this, I'll put this on grid snap. And then you can just do that. And I can just snap these all to... No, that one's not wanting to snap. Come on. I hate when I don't want to snap. Dirty rat, you. Alright, let's see if I zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Sometimes either just a zoom in a little bit more or less will correct the issue, I guess, as far as trying to. Uh... Okay. Snap this one. Whoa, where the heck did you go? Might be more than one vert there, so let's do this. There we go. Sometimes there's more than one vert there, so you want to probably do a drag select. Just like that. Let's snap it in. This is just to ensure that you're getting it. Yeah, there's more than likely two verts right there. Oh, I hate when I don't want to snap. I don't know how we got on this playlist. We're still on the Techno Axe, but I'm going to scale this back here a little again. Once again. Give me a second here. Let's go uh, playlist. Put it back on this one. Playlist adjustment. Just for a second. There we go. Okay. Let's try this again. So let's go drag select. Yeah, see, now it's not wanting to do that again. That'll happen too. That's common. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. A lot of times when it does that, when it wants to snap to the true grid, uh, which is what the grid snap is primarily designed for, it's kind of an average, I guess, of... Uh, and when it does that, a lot of times when you zoom out, just like I did there, that'll correct that. A lot of times when it don't snap to the true grid, zooming in a little bit more will we'll correct it. So just depending on how it's reacting, uh, it's going to usually determine... Uh, which direction you want to move, zoom in or zoom out a little bit more, I guess, to get it to snap. See, like, how it doesn't want to snap there. A lot of times if I move a little bit further in. No, I'm going to make sure I get that. Oh, it still doesn't want to. Just zoom it in and out. Just wake it up a little bit. No, oh, still doesn't want to. Come on. You can do it. There you go. Whoa, why did it snap there? Okay, that snapped totally wrong. <laughs> kind of ticked it off there a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I think i got, I got to get these down here. There might be more than one there. Come on, snap. You dirty rat. <laughs> and it'll sometimes happen, like I said. It's got to wake it up sometimes. Uh, oh, man, I got... Make sure I got the right thing here. So I need this one here. This one here is the that's another another phase, so I don't want to get that one confused. Uh, 
Come on. You dirty son of a gun, yeah. There we go. Uh, something else didn't line up here. What happened? Might be lining that up with the wrong one. Let's do that. I might need to go to this one, I think. Let me check that. One way to find out. Let's do this. Let's see where we're at. So that's... Okay. So I need to get that one to there, yeah. That should be right. No, don't go to that one. Dang it. <laughs> it's going to the true grid, so let's move it out. There we go. It's still crooked here, though. I'm trying to figure out why. Did I snap that to the wrong? Why are we crooked there? Alright. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go polygon. I'm going to select all these. And narrow this down a little bit. And all these. These are what I'm trying to get lined up. And then filter. Just what I got selected there. This will get a better idea of where I need to snap. Yeah, so this is where I'm wrong. Okay. Yep, that was snapping to the wrong one. So let's put this one. Come on. Snap, you son of a gun. No, not that one. Control Z. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Somehow that got crooked, I don't know why. Okay, that was what was throwing me off. So that should be snapped. That's all lined up. That's all lined up. That's all lined up. That's lined up. That's lined up. So both those ends are lined up now. That's all I was trying to get done. Cool. So uh, that's all mapped all the way around now. Marvelous. Alright, so now... I think just to kind of uh, clean this up a little bit, I'm going to hide a couple of these items here. So I'm going to hide this here. I'll keep the unwrap to it. I'll hide that one. That one's object 088. And we're also going to hide this one. Now, I want to bring back that inside, which is... Um, to your drive through right here. So I'm going to bring that one back in. Wait a minute. Why do I got... What I do here? Let me render this and see what I got going on here. Why in the world did I put... Not sure why I put that one there. I only need this part here, I guess, as far as that interior. Alright, so I don't know why I put... Must have been a method of my madness there. So what I have here is... A poly there. Shouldn't really need that. Okay, well. Yeah, the only part that I should really need to have in this is that, that. <clears throat> Let's see what I'm doing here. So that, that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Just getting a feel of what I got in here. It should be just this U-shaped in here, whatever, to make that drive-through. I shouldn't need anything 
outside oh, decks. I already got a polys. I don't need anything up here, for example. You're not gonna see that. Definitely not gonna see that. Um Okay, I think I see what I did. For some reason, I extended that all the way up beyond what you would actually see. That's not uh, that's not going to be necessary, I don't believe. Okay, so is that? Yeah, that's faced inwards. Yep. So on this part. Not a hundred percent sure why I extended that all the way up. I only need it to that level. Let's see here. Yeah, so I only need this outside wall. I already have that on the outside. All right, so let's bring back which. Um, let's unhide by name here. What piece was that? That was. Uh, 88 was that 93 I think it was right no shoot what was that uh, so 93 is what that's okay that was 93 okay hide that one so it must have been the 88 Doo -doo -doo. where you at 88 so that piece here, yeah, I've already got um, outside wall here, right? So I don't need that to be extended on the inside here, right? You're not going to see that. So what I can do on that inside, the interior walls there, is I can bring that down so it's not going all the way up to this level on the roof line. I can just bring that down just to make a... A simple U shape in the, in the inside here. There's none of that above the ceiling of that. Or you're not going to see any of that. There's no reason to have that there. And I already have an outside wall here on that piece. So, okay, so let's hide that once more. So basically, all I need to do, and it kind of looks like I did extend up on it. I don't know why I did that. Not 100% sure why I did that. Okay, so let's take out. Oh, no, I didn't. That's just the wall cut. Okay, the ceiling cutting into that. Okay, I got you. In any case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down this vertex here to this level. Alright, so we need that Z. Copy that. And bring that down to this level, like so. Um, so there must be more than one vert there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one here. the heck what the what did I just move down <laughs> I should have moved that down why is uh, yeah, yeah. what do I got going on here I don't know what verts I just moved down that should have moved that down and left a hole here on this end not sure why it didn't Hmm. That's strange. <sighs> I got a lot of polys here I don't really need. This can go bye bye. Oh shoot, what the heck? Huh? Okay. Let's try this side. 
That is weird. Wow, can't figure out why I did that. Alright, let me go ahead and take that out just anyway. I just want to see here. I may need that. Huh. That's definitely on an angle, though. What the heck? What the heck? That looks like it's on an angle. I guess it, from this angle, it looks like it is on an angle. Maybe it's not. Are those both at the same height? Let's check that out. So this one... 3673 3673, yep, so that's the same level 3673, yep So now I just want to get rid of that poly Okay, that is weird <coughs> I think what's throwing me off, it looks like it's one poly, but it's just the ceiling that's... The ceiling edge is coming through this poly right here. So let's just bring this down to let me copy this ver this vertex. Okay. That's weird. So that would suggest to me it's got a double face on it. It's the fact that it's not this should move down and leave a hole. I'll leave an opening here. So I don't know why it's not. What else is there? That is weird. Lots of weird stuff happening. The heck, why is... It's acting like there's a vert there and there's nothing there. Why are you being such a pain in the butt? There's no vertex there. <laughs> At least nothing visible anyway. Oh, for crying out loud, why? What the heck? I don't know what, let me render this really quick. There's nothing there, but why is it, is it on this side? There's got to be a poly on one of these sides. Are you kidding me? Now it's gone. Oh, psh, now I got rid of it. That was weird. It was like a ghost, I guess, of the poly or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, that should be what we need now. Just like that. Now I don't know if I'll need... Let me bring back that Option 88. I don't think I do, but I'll check. That should be all we need right there for the interior walls, I guess, of that that part. So let's bring back the 88. Object 88. Like so. And we'll just take a look at what we got here. I think we'll be good this way. I think why I put that little sliver here, there's not going to be anything here on the inside. But that would be nothing to add. Yes. Okay. Hold on. So probably what I'm going to be missing is this this little piece here even though it's showing in this one if I render that this this piece right here that that's just the outside so it's not going to be on the inside so I'll need something on the inside to accommodate this space in here so let's render that really quick yeah oh maybe there's there one there okay okay so there's one there check it this way
So I didn't realize there was uh, back basing there. Yep, seems to be there too. All right, so let's confirm. Yeah, see, there's no face. Oh my god, this thing is starting to make me mad again. So what I don't have, even though it seems to be rendering that, there's no poly right here in this little strip. Even though we can see it here and it renders, that's only on the outside, which is on this side. So there is some here that's confirmed. So we can highlight it. Or wait a minute. Okay, we're on the interior. There's object 88. Okay, let's get the poly. So there's a poly there. Now we can confirm, but there is not one here. Okay. <clears throat> It'll probably show more if we were to put the model into the game, but that's I'm not going to get that far. But the fact that it's showing in our viewport as well as when we render it, there's actually nothing. You can see that green bounding box. There's no strip of poly right here. So I'm going to have to add that to the inside. That's the only conclusion I was making there. So some of this is fine. So the fact that I've got this, the rest of this design here is going to have to add a strip uh, from this level, from the ceiling over. And then let's line it up with this outside piece here. Alright, let's do that. Um, shoot, I don't want to do that. Go into the interior part. This is going to be rough. Okay, so let me hide this object 88 first here for, just for a minute. Why are you not hiding? I had a selection. There we go. Oh, I hit the wrong daggum thing. Son of a... No, I want to keep the inside. Yes, I want that piece. Now, what I need to do is just add a, a scab on this part. And I can probably do these at the same time. So, if I grab um, this interior piece like so, I'll go to Edge. I'll select this edge as well as this edge and then bring these both out at the same time. South Texas white boy coming in with some biddies. How we doing there, South, South Texas? Sneaking in with some biddies. Thank you for the biddies. Howdy, howdy. As you can join in on the stream here, we're just having a little bit of fun now. Uh, modeling here. I actually try to do some texturing and modeling a little bit at the same time I guess. I mean, I'm doing fine here. I know uh, got a couple of people are just lurking about. It's kind of chillaxing I guess on this uh, hot and balmy uh, Saturday I guess for most of us. Hope you're finding yourself cool. I don't know if it's uh, hot in your neck of the woods. I know it's been kind of balmy here. Okay, so what I need to determine now is how wide do I need to make that. So I brought it out a little bit on both ends. Uh, so as far as to line it up with our outside, um, I'm going to need to get the vertex coordinate, I guess, for that so I can line it up properly so it's not too long or too short width wise uh, been up to the mid 90s lady yep cold beer always helps oh yeah absolutely it's like a little uh, adult li libation I guess to a nice cold one yeah absolutely alright so what I need to do on hide object 88 Alright, so you can see if you can tell here. So what I need to do 
It might be a little bit tough to tell, but you can see where that ends. Uh, the piece that I extended out here, I need to get it to line up with this here. So there's that darker shade here and this lighter shade. So this is the new edge that I just pulled out uh, from the inside panels. I need to get that to line up with the outside panel. So it's this one. In this case, it's too short. So I need to get that stretched out, I guess, to that. So You'll be right back. All right, no problem there. We'll still be here. All right, so on this inside piece, I'm going to grab that vertex here. And I should be able to, in theory, I know we're going to have a lot of strange things happening here <laughs> lately. I should be able to grab this vertex and snap it there. So now I know it's the same. It's lining up with that outside vertex there. Okay, so let's see if we can get the top here. I should be able to do that because we got a vertex here on the outside. I think. I might just have to do an edge snap there. Yeah. There's no vertex, I guess, on the outside. I guess on that part, I don't believe. All right, so let's grab that, and I'll put this on edge snaps as well. We should be able to snap. Ah, crap! That's what I was afraid of. So it's the height of it's gonna wonked out. So what I'll do, kind of correct that, turn that off. Um, I need to make sure I'm on the inside interior drive through like this and then go to vertex I'll grab this Z I don't know if you can highly tell that when I snap that to the edge it's not level so it's not a straight straight across now so what I'm doing is I'm getting grabbing the Z from this one that's still where I'll you know that height that I want it to be I'm copying that value Go to this vert and then paste it in there to straighten it back out. So it's not crooked. And you do your at. Let's try this way. I know you're not straight. So I don't know why it's not adjusting. You can definitely tell it's not straight. It might be the other way, actually. It may look like it's the Z, but it's probably no. It's definitely in the Z, so you can tell. Oh, it doesn't line up there. Mm-hmm. Let's try this again. So if we go here, grab the C. Paste that here. Okay, there's one of them. Oh, that's level. Oh, we must have another one here. I don't know where we're getting all these duplicate verts and polys. That's what's bugging me. It's definitely something still not lined up there. You can see this other line right here. Where the f heck is that coming from? Unless that's on the outside. Uh, let me try that. Alright, let me close up. I'll lock this down for now. Yes. Go into vertex. Is this here? Yep, that seems to be at the right. Dang gum it. Why was that looking? Now it doesn't look like that though, so it must have may have maybe corrected itself. No, it definitely looks like it's still gosh darn it, why is it doing that? Oh my god. You can definitely see there's something still not lined up there. Just crap. I always gotta have a So this way it looks fine, so I think it's just on the inside that it's goofed up. 
let's check it out this side it's not straight I know that I just got to figure out which vertex isn't lined up here so you can see it's kind of clipping there see so it's on an angle here so I think it's on the inside so let's grab our inside vertex I don't know why that looks like it's I don't know what it's doing there that's you can definitely see that line that's not straight I don't know why that's you goofy son of a gun you yeah so that would be our inside face there that is definitely crooked huh let's render that really quick just to see Psh, yeah I can't tell that's the only problem as far as like the uh, back face calling when you try to render stuff especially when you got them like they're like back to back to each other as far as your polys um, that's what will happen uh, okay so that's what I have to assume that's good to go now on this one Try snap this one here. Turn off the edge snap. We'll just go to vert snap. So down here is fine. It's up here. It usually becomes a little bit of an issue. Because we don't have a vertex. And this part here is just an edge. Right? So when we grab this here. Bring it over. It's given that appearance that it's crooked, and it may not necessarily be crooked. Sure does look like it's crooked, though. Still there, even on this end. Yep, you can still see that. Oh, it tends to taper down, but I don't know. When I check it this way, that's the height I want it to be. Three, three, six, seven, three. Go to here. That is off a little bit. There. So it is going up, but it's still showing this line. Which is kind of weird. Oh, well. Based on the coordinates there of the vertex, it's showing it's it's good to go. So I'll just leave it at that. So it is going to flicker like that only because, again, those, those faces, as far as the polys, they're back to back to each other. So they're going to clip because they're, like, right next to each other that's as far as that goes. So that's so now we got that where we need it to be as far as on the inside panels. I'll go ahead and hide object 88 again. Um, whoops, let's make sure we get that one selected though. Yep, so this one here and hide that. There, now we just got those inside pieces. Now we can get that texture applied. <laughs> All right, so let's get that texture applied um, to that inside. So go on our material editor and apply. Cool. Now let's do an unwrap. Open up the editor, UV editor, texture. Expand this out a little bit. Alright, and then we want to go into polys. Alrighty then, so let's get um, this one first. And we'll do a quick planer. And this one we want to be plywood. Um, Really, probably what I could do on this one here is I could probably just apply the dark to it. Um, <clears throat> I'll probably put a darker shade of plywood. You know, kind of make it look more rustic. So I'll take the same plywood and make a different variation, I guess, of that plywood. So I'll put this over here for now. And this, this is the part of the texture we're not using yet. So I'll put it right over here for now. And I'll apply that to the texture. So let's put that right there. So, go 
cool. It'll look a little funky on here and now until I adjust the texture at least anyway. Zella Sam, how we doing? Uh, Torch Trickin is always giving himself a shot. And that was successful. What about the risk? Oh, nope. So got some extracted. And, oh, one out of three. Sorry about that. Have you used the Scold Deer there yet? Torch, I haven't seen you use the Scold yet. I know that bot hasn't been too kind yet, so. Not trying to tell you what to do, but you can definitely, uh. Oh, you're saving it, though. You're saving it to the end there. <laughs> yeah, for anybody in the chat, to include Zam's open open in Zam. I didn't want to be rude and, uh. I wasn't trying to ignore you. Um, I do have the audio commands in there, too, so if you find that I'm not paying attention to chat all that much and I'm getting focused on what I'm doing here, uh, feel free to use the audio commands. Um, any one person can use uh, a, a, an audio command once, at least every minute. Um, that's just to kind of spread it out and give everybody an option to be able to use uh, all the different commands. I do have a new command in the chat uh, to kind of highlight, I guess, those different audio commands, which is exclamation point audio. Um, but it's like I said, uh, just keep in mind for any one audio command that any uh, one does use, you can only use it once and then you gotta wait a minute before you can use another uh, audio command. So, and that's just to keep the audio commands, I guess, from getting spammed, I guess, in the chat because it uh, can, can, can get ridiculous <laughs> sometimes. So. <clears throat> But those are free to, for anyone to use, regardless of uh, status. Um, that's just um, in an effort, I guess, to uh, sometimes get my attention if I do tend to ignore chat. I don't, I don't mean to do that. Sometimes I get focused into doing this stuff. And you know, if you if you're coming in here and you want to uh, catch my attention, if you do feel free, I guess, to use those. They are on a one-minute cooldown, so that's kind of eliminating the possibility, I guess, of being too annoying. All right, so we got that side. Um, in fact, what I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this to texture right away. So we're gonna go into our texture, which is this one here. I'm gonna back it up, get the layers back, and I'm gonna put a different variation of this plywood in this spot. That's where I've got that one wall, of that interior drive-through, I guess, as far as uh, map too. I probably hurt Zam's feelings. I don't know how long ago you said it, something like that, but I know he's. Sorry about that, Zam, if you're still there. I get so focused on doing these things sometimes. That's why I put the audio commands, like I said, though. So I want to copy this layer. Do this as new image. Oh crap, I forgot to cut that one down. Wasn't that fancy? I forgot to cut that one down right here. Uh Okay. Um let's crop that down right away. I thought I had it all trimmed up, but I guess not. Apparently not. Now I do. Now all I want to do on this one here is just kind of make it a little bit darker uh, for the interior. You know, kind of give it a different shade on that. Um, you know, give it more like a soiled type of white painted plywood type of look. Um, a couple different ways I can do that. Let's apply a layer. Brightness contrast. Let's just decrease that. Uh, maybe something like that just to give it a little bit a different tone uh, than the one on the outside you know kind of like it's grimy dirty all that type of thing because when it's inside there you don't you don't get washed off by the weather and stuff as much as it does on the outside it's kind of what my thought behind it anyway so we'll do flatten that. Copy this into a new layer. 
right up in that spot. So we'll do an edit paste as new layer. And we'll put that right over here. As I've continued to say, there'll be several modifications to this texture as we move along to accommodate what we want to get textured and how. So that's just another adjustment we're making. So for this one, I'm going to do rename. Uh, I'm going to do white plywood. I'll just quit dirty plywood. That's about that. Now I can tell the difference in my layers here as far as which one's what. So now that's that layer. And then we'll go ahead and do a layers, merge all, flatten, file, save as. We'll save that as our DDS. And that's going to be DTX1, generate map maps. Now we'll have to reload the texture in here. That's why they kind of go away there for a second. That's normal. Um, reload. There we go. Let's go back up to here. Cool. Now we've got that applied to the outside. So you can kind of see that. Now it's going to show on this side here only because, of, like, again, those two polys are, are butted up to each other. We're going to see it on look like it's on both sides. But if I render this, there's nothing going to be here in most cases. And, of course, it's lied to me. So the fact that it's I, probably because I don't have the back face calling on, that's probably why it's showing that way. It only should be on this side. And the way I can tell is when I highlight the poly this way, that's how I know it's only on the one side. Now if I look on this side when it's dark, that means the the face of the poly is facing you know inside. So it's facing this way, not this way. So that's my way to tell, at least anyway. Alright, so that one is mapped. We'll go ahead and get this wall now. And we'll do a quick planner on that one. And we're going to line that up with the... That, oh, we need to update our texture in here. So let's update. There we go. And we will grid snap this one here so they line up both the same. So line this up just a little bit shy. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'll turn the grid snaps on, go to vertex mode, and snap those into place. Ah, hate when you don't want to snap. Snap, you son of a gun. There we go. Sometimes you just got to wake it up a little bit. Show them who's boss. Come on. You can do it. You dirty rat, you. Snap. I want you to snap. <laughs> See, and then I'll do that noise. So we'll do a control C just to get off of that. Zoom in a little bit. Now it should work. There we go. A lot of times when it'll do that, it'll try to snap to the true grid as far as the, the outside parameters of the texture. Just like that. It's usually the best thing to do control Z. Zoom in a little bit. And then it should snap. In most cases. Not all the time. Usually it'll work. It could be temperamental. Yep, there it goes again. Come on. I know you can do it. Oh, I had it too. Dang it. Let's do control Z. It did snap and I moved it. You dirty son of a gun. See, it's trying to snap to that natural grid, which is what that is designed to do. 
that is what it's designed to do but come on snap uh, come on I know you can do it <laughs> I don't know why it's being so temperamental it's usually not quite this temperamental come on Snap, you son of a gun. <laughs> it keeps wanting to snap out there every time I do that. And when I wake it up, it wants to go all the way out there. And it's because it's so close, I guess, to that, that grid. Come on, you dirty rat thing. Control Z will always get you get you back there. Don't try to fight it against as far as tug of war. No, just make it worse. This goofy thing anyway it's usually never this temperamental I don't know why it's being so oh my goodness come on that's crazy I don't know if I'm zoomed in too far or not enough Whoops, what are you doing? Snap. Oh well. We're just going to get it close. I'm not going to worry about it too much, but it's being a little bit of a pain, so we'll get it close at least anyway. It doesn't have to be perfect in this case. We don't have a particular pattern, I guess, that we want to line up, but yeah. The fact that that current snap is being very temperamental right now, I'm not, not going to sit there and fight it. Okay. So, now we got those. Now we just need these two pieces here, these two scabs. Let's get those. We'll go back to Polygon. Do these one at a time. Do a quick planner. And these can really go pretty much anywhere on here. They can go to either end. We can get them grid snapped on top of each other. Uh, doesn't really matter. Having s <laughs> as much trouble as I am I guess, with the grid snap, I'll just get it close in here. We don't, like I said, we don't have a pattern that we're trying to line up like we did with the, uh, the mortar joints on the cinder block. So there's really no sense to have to uh, apply the grid snap to the polys onto the texture. So you can just, in this case, I can just get them really close. Will satisfy, I guess, as far as being able to get it. Uh, I think I need to get the ceiling mapped yet yeah, too. But let's get this other scab over here. All right. Get a quick planner of that. So again, I can put this right over top of this one here, or just put it on the other end, or just pretty much anywhere in this part of the texture, as long as I got this dirty plywood type of look to it. I'll do it this way. That'll work. Okay, so now we just need to get the ceiling. Do that the same way. We do the quick layer. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, I think what I want to do on this one is probably turn it this way. And oh, for crying out loud. For all that matters, we can just leave it just like that. Now, if I want to grid snap it, like I've been to, to get it all lined up, I guess, with the walls, I can do that. If I don't have to. There. Now we've got that textured. And that's what you can see why I turned it. Instead of the grain going this way, it's going to go this way. So it looks like the panels are going width-wise as opposed to length-wise. That'll look better that way. Okay. Good deal. So that's all mapped. We'll close that down. 
Um, action. Just to confirm, as I usually try to do anyway, make sure that I don't have any rogue um, polys hanging out there, which I don't. So everything's accounted for, I guess, for that piece of the model. So we'll go ahead and collapse that down. Cool. Now if I bring back that object 88, now we can see that's pretty much now it's going to have the clipping in there as I said and that's going to be expected I definitely won't do that I guess once it's in the in the simulation itself as you can see now the cutaway of this all these polys up in here that I took out um, earlier there's you can see the reason why you're not going to see any of that so the fact that this is all hollow I guess up above the ceiling of this here that's all hollow up in here you're not going to see any of that so there's no polys up in this upper part here. There's no reason for them to be up there because there's, you're not going to see it. It's unnecessary poly. So we, that's why we cleaned that up earlier as far as to bring that down uh, to the ceiling level. And then the only other th piece we had to add was just that scab, I guess, onto the doorway. The doorway opening, I guess, to that. So now we got all the inside done with the, with the plywood as well as the outside got the roof on it so that part's done We're making some progress kill okay, bites all right now we want to get this middle section as far as the blue I think that was the uh... <sighs> yeah let's go ahead and bring that I can remember which one that was named that was Object. I think it was this one right here. Yep. So now we want to get this one textured. Now we should. Um, let's see how I did this one here. Yeah. So it's. Again, we've already gotten the poly shortened up to what's only visible. So this side is all the way across the front. This one only goes up to the roof line. Yep. That's what we want. So it goes up only to the roof line in this. On these sides and then the front side it goes all the way from the peak to the ground so we're all good on that this part here this is all going to be plywood as well uh, as far as the walls and then we'll have the sheet metal on the roof and then same thing we'll do the this is a separate piece as well so we do plywood on there sheet metal on the roof and at least get that all established okay we're getting there. Let's do this one next. We'll get the texture applied. I'm going to go ahead and save this, actually. Save our progress. I know it should be doing a backup, but I don't want to have to deal with what I did earlier as far as to have to re reapply the locations, I guess, of the textures, I guess, to the model. It takes a little bit more time than I care to want to have to deal with, so I'll go ahead and save as over this one here yep cool that way even though I'm, it does have the um, the auto save it, realizing I guess as far as what we had to deal with as far as applying those textures the way we did well, we don't want to have to do that again that was kind of a pain <laughs> don't want to have to do it again waste of time uh, time I don't necessarily care to want to spend alright so let's um, apply the texture to this part of the model so our feed mill, like so. Get that initial texture on there, like so. And then unwrap it. Open up the UV editor. Make sure our texture's in there. Cool. And now let's select some polys. Let's do this side first. Alright, so there that one is. We're going to filter this out and do a quick planner. So it's even got the peak in it. That's pretty neat. Um, this is all plywood. So we'll put it on this part. Like so. That'll work. 
can see that applied. Beautiful. Now let's uh, get this side. So far, all I've been doing is just a quick planner. I haven't done a flattened map or anything. You'll probably get a way of doing a flattened map as well. Uh, in most cases, because we don't have a plethora of um, a polys in it, for example. Um, very simplistic polys. Relatively low poly on this thing, but it's still got plenty of detail. Let's put that in there like that. So there's that side. So again, the scaling might be a little bit off. We can always adjust that after after the fact. It's really just going to come down to that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, as far as just get the scaling of the uh, the cinder blocks and the plywood and all that stuff and get that patterns of the, the grain of the plywood and the mortar joints and whatever to scale it down in the texture itself based on where we have the polys of the model laid out in the texture. Not incredibly that difficult. Uh, See what we got here. We do a quick planner. So once again, we'll put this in the plywood. I'm gonna turn this back on so we can kind of get this lined up with the other gable end, like so. Probably won't worry about grid snapping it. I'll just kind of get it roughly lined up here. This one's got a different peak on it? What the heck? That's weird. Yeah, and I guess it would be too because this one's longer. Yeah, that's probably fair to mention. So the fact that it goes... The peak is the same all the way across the top here, right? But this overall poly is longer than this side. So that's why the orientation of the peak is a little bit different. So I can probably adjust that manually. I'll get the walls and that lined up. And then just adjust the peak on this end. Um... There we go. So now what I can do here is go to Vertex. And just move this. Oh, got two of them there. Okay, hold on. Grab them both. I'll just move this up to this level. Like that. That way it's kind of somewhat lined up there. Marvelous, and I'm gonna get this wall. Alright, so do the quick planer. Uh, this is, should probably be the roof, at least part of the roof. There's probably two pieces for the roof. So I'll probably do one side at a time for the roof. That'll be all sheet metal. Oops. Let's get that sized up into here. There we go. Cool bind. So we don't have a particular pattern to where things need to line up like the mortar joints on the blocks. So it's going to be semi-random, but you get that idea, I guess, as far as the the knots and the plywood and all that good stuff, as far as the, you know, just that variation in color, you know, as far as when you paint plywood, as far as you got some bright spots and dark spots and stuff like that. Uh, the overall scaling is probably 
definitely too big but that's okay we can adjust the texture based on where we got those I've, as I've mentioned so let's get the roof of this and we'll do one side at a time here yep so there's one so we'll do a quick planer and there's the other side there keep it right in that orientation put this in the There we go. So we got that on there. So again, the scaling might be a little bit off on that, um, as far as the ribs on that. We can always adjust that later on. Get that. This should be the last panel for this part. It's right there. We'll do a quick planer. Line that up on sheet metal there as well. I'm going to try and grid snap this one again for the heck of it. Let's just see if I can get that to work. This, these, simple, these simple shapes like this as far as you know, four corners on it like that, this should be no issue. Uh, the fact that I have been having issue, I guess as far as get it to grid snap, that's just goes to show you how temperamental it's being. But Alright, so there's that. Uh, let's go to vertex. Good snap. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? It's already starting to act up. There we go. Kind of walked out there a little bit, not too bad. Alright, that one's not wanting to snap. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. I got a little crazy there, but trying to get it to behave. This one might want to try to snap to the true grid. We'll see how that works. Oh, did there for a second. It thought better of it, though. Come on. It's always one of them that doesn't want to. Alright. Three out of four, I guess ain't bad. Same as before. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Cool. So that's all mapped. Moving right along. We're getting there. It's a lot of white in it, that's for sure. Um, I'll probably add some variation. You know, just some some weathering, you know, things like that. I think once we get uh, the center block and things like that, once you get it all scaled, it'll look a lot better. But there's a lot of white, that's for sure. All right, so this part here, same thing. This has got um, plywood around it and sheet metal on the roof. Okay, so we'll go ahead and collapse this down. Go and just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and save it again. Save our progress. Okay, now let's apply the texture to this part. Go to Material Editor and apply that. Cool. Now unwrap it. Open Editor. That up. Oh, nothing on the shot. Uh, oh, you keep. I think it's about every time you've done the wrist, it's extracted it, hasn't it? Oh, you missed it. That darn cap on the slots. You're batting all for nothing there. You scolded them. There you go. <laughs> that bot. It was definitely. Not nice at all on three of those. Dagon bot. Showed it. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll start with that side. That's cool. Um, do that, and then we'll do a quick planer. And let's filter this out. That's going to be all plywood. 
and it's gonna be all the outside one here so we'll put it right on that so it's got that slope in there too it's got a little slight of a slope um, on these sides so you can kind of see here it's got just a gradual slope on here and it's actually showing on the poly here oops what happened to my playlist um, yep still here wake that playlist back up okay so yeah the fact that it's showing that slope not poly it's kind of nice it gives you some sense of orientation um, as far as which way it's if it's flipped upside down or what have you in this case it is not it's exactly the way I want it to be um, you got a thousand on slots when did you get a thousand on slots did I miss that You got to run, no problem there, Torch. Appreciate you sticking around. I guess as far as what we got going on here. Hopefully, you, uh, hopefully some of that information was helpful. Oh, wait, a while ago? I guess I missed that. I'll have to look back on that. I thought you thought you might have missed on the slots. At least you got one. <laughs> I'll have to look back on, uh, on the chat there and see. I missed it. I didn't see any hype in there or anything like that, so I guess maybe that's why uh, you didn't use the audio command or anything. Most of the letter, let me know as far as what's going on with that. Well, as long as you gain something. I know, um, lately anymore, it seems like I've, <laughs> I've had to, uh, I've had the means of being able to show how to recover, I guess, from something that screws up, I guess, in your scene. That's happened a couple different streams now. So, so we get a lot of that. Oh, something I'm seeing I need to adjust in this. Right off the bat here, I gotta adjust this gap. Either need to fill that in or move that vertex down. That's probably what I'll end up doing is end up move that vertex down. I'll do that after I get it textured. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just it's just kind of crazy in a way as far as the, that's what I've been able to show I guess for the most part here is how to recover I guess from a screw up that you might have in your scene in different ways that you can recover that um, that one episode when I was dealing with the fairy as far as being able to cut the I never did really show that process there but really just to kind of put a summary I guess on that um, besides the fact that I was able to get the cuts put in there for the windows the portholes and whatever on the fairy skipper house um, it really just comes down to having a simplified cutter, I guess, to be able to go into the poly. Uh, the fact that I had a very complex cutter that I was initially trying to use based on the original shape of the hole that I had there. So I just had to simplify that shape, and then it was it was able to it just cut through it like it was normal. So I had a lot of struggle, I guess, on that to try to figure out what the f heck I need to do there. So, yeah. Yeah, it basically come down to it was just too many polys. Yeah, to be a simplified cutter. So for anybody that doesn't know as far as when you want to use something as a cutter in a boolean, uh, in a boolean cut, um, you want to have the least amount of polys in your cutter as possible. Otherwise, it's not going to cut properly. So that's just to kind of give a quick summary, I guess, of what was uh, going on in that situation. For anybody that didn't know. But... Uh, yeah, definitely was able to recover. Just took a took me a, a minute, I guess, to get off the stream and then just have to re uh, reassert and so on. Oh, you did? Cool. Nice. Yeah, and that's where the vods I guess go. I guess come in handy. You know, as far as when you do have to leave, you know, it's understandable. IRL does. Uh, necessarily present itself so it's um, it's nice for anybody that doesn't isn't able to catch the live streams and they want to get the information guess about that you can always got the bots to fall back on I need to get better on getting them over to YouTube that's the only thing I got a slew of them that need to get uh, over from Twitch over to the YouTube so 
That's just a um, failure on my part is all. Have a good night, Air Torch. Appreciate you. Um, you want to do that for you? What? Do what for me? How are we doing, Kai? <laughs> want to do what for me? Okay, so I get that one highlighted. I need to go into this. Quick planner. Right, and I need to put some plywood on it. It doesn't really matter where I have this one situated, but I'll put it over here. I'm trying to keep it somewhat tidy in here. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, so I'm realizing this is probably a little bit overscaled as far as the way that plywood's applied to that, much the same as the cinder blocks are, but we'll get that adjusted eventually. It's just better to see uh, some texture on this than the, other than this these simple colors all right so let's get some plywood on this side we'll do the quick planner there now do we want to get this lined up I guess with the other one we got there so we still got the roof to do which is probably that's what's left there Let's get this lined up with our other side. We're going to flip this. Do it like this, yeah. So line those two slopes up. that work. They don't have to be perfect, but you know, get them somewhere in the ballpark, I guess, of that. There's no, like I said, there's no specific pattern that I need to have lined up like we do with the cinder block. So the fact that I get these lined up close enough, that should be good. Now this, all this what's left here should be the roof. Oh, okay. So we got that part. Ah, nuts. I forgot about that. So that, that one's going all the way from the, okay, I want to redo this then. Yep, I'm gonna grab these two. I'll redo, reapply a planner map to that. I goofed on that, so I'm gonna keep those both together. So I forgot the the one wall is shorter than this side. This one goes all the way from the roof line to the ground. Okay. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and flip this. Line it up the same way. Yeah, this will work. Good enough. There we go. So yeah, now we got plywood going all the way down the side. Now if I really wanted to get picky, which I don't think I'll need to at this point, um, just to make sure that there's no extreme variation I guess between like crap that got loud there we go <laughs> I got a little bit loud in comparison but yeah if I w really wanted to eliminate I guess any extreme uh, variation I guess between this part of the building and then this over here just the way the grain is and all that stuff I could play around with that but I don't doesn't look like I need to the scaling of it and so on, so on is still relatively uniform I'll just leave it just like it is um, I did the same thing over here too I need to redo this um, I needed to get this set this poly and that poly going all the way to the ground so that's all one side so I'll do that too okay let's get this and that and I'll re quick planner map that like so I still got and that's gonna be the roof probably that piece that's left there, more than likely. That's probably going to be the roof. So this one I'll put over on this side. 
I put that other, yeah, that other side over in this end, right? Somewhere. Huh. Oh, I don't see that. Oh, that's right. I had just, never mind. Never mind. I just combined those two. I had them separate initially there. That's why it's, I had to redo it. No problem. All right, so let's do that. Cool. Now, the only thing I will have to adjust once I get this all textures, I got this hole. That's right here. I'm going to have to adjust this vertex. It might be kind of hard now. There's a hole right here for this little wedge here. So once I get this textured, I'll have to adjust that um, vertex down. I can hide this um, this little bit of a roof here, this little ledge, so I can get to that, so I can align that vertex up with this building and probably this vertex right there. So I get that all lined up straight. Let's get the roof on this, though. That'll be our last piece of this part. Do a quick planner on that. And this one I'm going to go ahead and rotate it this way. Put that in where our sheet metal is. And that should be our last piece of this part. There's a roof. Whoops, that's going the wrong way. Crap. Thought I had it going this way. Alright, we need to redo that. So we don't want it going this way, we want it. We want the ribs running this way. Yeah. Because you know we got the ribs, all the ribs running this direction. I thought that's when I rotated it should have did that, but I guess it did. So we'll go ahead and reselect that. And we'll re-rotate that this way. We can confirm in the viewport here. It's too, too. Yep. So I got the ribs running this way now. Cool. Awesome. Uh, one thing that is definitely missing on this yet is like the lips. You know, as far as the overhangs, things like that. Uh, we don't have that on there right now. Everything is pretty much flush. Uh, so the fact that I'll I'll be adding. Eventually, on this thing, I'll add like little overhangs and stuff like that. Uh, that's something else I'll be able to tweak on it once I get it all textured, at least anyway. So that's still yet to come. So there are all these little accessories and little minor, de uh, finer details, I guess, to it. I'll add you know, like the railing, I guess, for the door, is for the track, or whatever that the door runs on. Uh, these doors more than likely won't be functional, uh, but they'll have the look that they're functional. Uh, as far as to add the, the 3D track uh, to the door so that they slide open. Uh, I might even go so far as to add some thickness to the door. Uh, panel itself right now is just flat. It's relatively even, I guess, with the uh, texture of the cinder block. So just to kind of add some definition to it, that's probably something else I'll apply. And again, that'll be all the fine-tuning, I guess, of, of the building once we get there. Uh, but for the most part, we got the bulk of this thing textured inside of that as well as all the outside we still need to get this peak we'll get that one done um, let's go ahead and close up the UV unwrap for this that's done for now yep and we'll go ahead and save it save the scene so do you save as All right, so that work is saved. Now let's, um, I want to adjust this vertex right here. I'm going to hide this piece, this little overhang. Um, object 70, okay, cool. We'll hide that just so we can get to this. Now you can see where it's got a hole right here. It's kind of hard to tell. If I render this, it might show. No, but there is definitely a gap there. You can see that probably if I turn it. 
Yishui. Yeah, you can definitely see through that. That's what we don't want. So, in order to close that up, I can do this. I don't want to do this. Let's see here. Is that even there? That's why I gotta check. I'm gonna check this vertex over here. So this is at a Z of 52.13. Okay, so that's even. These two are even. So what's uneven is probably this other building here. So let me check the the height. Oh, I still got the unwrap on this one. Let's close that one up. Collapsed all. Do a yes. So I'm going to check the height of this one and the height of this one. One of these has got to be off. We already checked these two here. That's even. So we know that's not, that's good. So it's probably going to be on this one. So let's go to the vertex. Grab this one. Uh, 50.93. You son of a gun, anyway. Okay, so that whole... What I need to do is either bring these two up just a little bit so that it's even with that, or I need to move... I need to move these two down so that it meets up with that. So... Both these two are even, so basically what it is is this one's a little bit, these two verts on this part of the building is lower than these two, so that's why I got the gap. So really what it comes down to, I can move these two down to meet up with this roof line, or I can move this, these two verts on this roof line up to meet up with that one. And go one of two ways. Um, I think what I'm going to do... I can... I really hate to hmm I don't want to do that I think I'm just gonna move these two down I think that's what I'm gonna do so let me copy the um... Let's see here. And get that value again so on this one I'm going to copy this Z value. Okay, and I'm going to go back into here. And then put that at that value. So we go, I'll do these one at a time. So I'm just bringing this down to that value I just copied. And that's going to make that even with that roof line. There. Now that should take that gap out of there. Yeah, that'll be a lot less noticeable that way than it would be to have moved that one up because I want to keep that slope into that to give that. Because if I would have moved that up there, it would have made that much more flatter on this on this slope here, and I didn't want that. So, yeah, that'll, that'll be a nice compromise, I guess, to that to get that to be nice and level across there. And also give us that, um, that separation... Of potential material between this bottom half of this part and the upper half right now I just got plywood on it but uh, if I look at the pictures it does show there's brick on this bottom half so I'll probably want to put brick on the bottom half and then plywood above it as far as where this uh, overhang is so right now it's just all plywood um, but I put this line in here so I could potentially put a line coming across through here uh, so I can put brick below it and I can even probably move this line down so it's underneath this overhang so all the brick would show under the overhang and then just have plywood above it that's some adjustments I'll be able to make uh, to the model as I go along so I left a little bit of room I guess for adjustability into it for, to, to be able to separate uh, di the different textures anyway. So for the most part on this building, everything on the lower part of it, from say this point, is all brick as far as this concrete block and above it is all plywood. And then sheet metal for the uh, 
for the roof. So, yep, I think we're well on our way, I guess, with this thing, though. Looks a lot better, I guess, having some type of texture on it, even though it's, it's kind of misscaled a little bit. It's still not 100% terrible. Okay, now, two last pieces I want to at least get done here. The, I wanted to get that bulk of that stuff done. It's going to get down to this real fine uh, detail stuff as far as the stairs and such like that. Um, I still need to put railings or some type of railing or something on those. So the only two really intricate parts are going to be these towers as well as the stairwells and stuff like that. All these little smaller pieces are going to really need a lot more attention to detail as far as how oh, the texture gets applied to them. Um, yeah, so I think what I'll do next, now that that's all done, I'm going to get this peak house here. This would be pretty easy. It's going to be plywood all the way around and then sheet metal on the top for the roof. So we'll get the texture applied to it. Like so. We'll do the unwrap. Open up the UV editor. Apply the texture. Expand this out. And let's select. Oh, let's do the F2 so we can see what we're selecting here. Do these a side at a time, so we'll do that. Uh, quick planner. Let's filter out the pieces that we don't need. So it's going to have two peaks in there, so it's got a um, it's got a peak up basically on the bottom half, and it's got a peak on this part, so it's the fact that it's giving me this orientation is kind of helpful. It gives me a, a sense of um, the orientation, I guess, of the polys that I have selected. So I'm going to put these right up here in the plywood. Like so. Okay, so there's that. Beautiful. All right, so we'll get this side. Do one side at a time. Quick planner is about the only thing I've been applying this whole thing. We've got very simple uh, polys, you know, as far as there's no complexity in the polys themselves. Uh, for the most part, the model overall is pretty much low poly. Very, very low poly considering. I've kind of balanced it out between uh, the amount of detail and the number of polys themselves to give it detail as well as uh, the texture. I kind of, you know, get uh, apply some detail to the texture itself. So like other parts like these towers, it's going to be a little bit more intricate, like I said, as far as to more or less I'll just be able to apply texture uh, to these different components there and it's going to add that much more uh, composure I guess to it as far as just make it pop a little bit more instead of just being a bland color you know one simple bland color okay so quick planner that Yeah, we'll just put most of all of this in this one side here. I'm not worried about how they're overlapping or anything like that. Just get them in the general vicinity there. Like so. We're just trying to establish at this point just where <clears throat> all these different faces of the model overall are going to end up. And we'll probably have a disaster as far as just an overall mess if we were to collapse this model down and actually look at the wireframe of where everything is at on the texture in totality. And that's going to be okay. Um, it, yeah, it'll be perfectly fine, I guess, as far as how that goes. The fact that we're using uh, the same area, I guess, to texture different parts of the model. I guess that's what I mean. There's no reason to have, in this case, um, 
different areas, I guess, for different parts of the model, the te on the te you know, as far as the texture is concerned. So there doesn't need to be designated areas for like this area of the model and so on. It's just, you can use the same area if it's relatively the same type of texture you want to apply, especially if you're not considering, I guess, to put anime, anime occlusion or any type of details like that onto the model, which we are not on this in this case for this one. So it's perfectly fine to do it the way we're doing it. All right, so now we want to get the roof. And I'm doing these both at the same time. I know I've been doing one side at a time. This is a relatively small roof, so I'm not going to worry about it too much as far as doing them separate. Mostly when it's a bigger a bigger stretch, like say from you know from here to here, you want to do them separate um, in most cases. You can get away with um, selecting any and all polys, I guess, as far as both sides of a peak. Just to ensure, like, the, f the fact that we've got the ribs that we want to line up, that, th that they do line up. I guess it's when you, when you do them both to get all together. Um, but in most cases, you want to try and do them separately if you can. And then line them up uh, by grid snapping or what have you, I guess, as far as uh, that way. Uh, otherwise, it'll make it, like, a much bigger... When you open it up in your uh, at a UVW window, it makes a, a much bigger scale... A type of piece to be able to shrink it down so it's kind of like the same idea you're taking 10 pounds of potatoes and trying to shove it into five pounds five pound sack it's better I guess to half it out to be able to put all that information and all that uh, uh, that amount of poly I guess into the same area so instead of squishing it down from a bigger piece it's a lot easier to kind of uh, piece it out half it out in this case and that's why I showed it that way as opposed to selecting it all together and trying to squish it down, I guess. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can get different results, I guess, when you do it uh, one way to the other. That's the other thing. Um, so this one here, yeah, we do a quick planner. And put this in our sheet metal. So we can see where our peak is at. So I can already tell as far as which way our... Uh, pattern is going to go, which is probably going to be the wrong way. I'll probably want to turn this. So let's see what we got here. So let's do F2. Actually, that's the direction we want to go. Okay. But see, it's scaling's wrong, so I'll have to rescale it. The ribs are kind of th much thinner, I guess, in comparison to what we got here, say, for example. So let's readjust this. Uh, let's see, do we need to go down or up? I think we're going to need to go down. Yeah, we need to go down this way. Whoops. I'll be doing that. Yeah, so because we're kind of smaller as far as the scale of this and what we're trying to texture is smaller, makes sense or whatever that we'd have to shrink this down. We don't want it this big. That's not how big it is in comparison to the rest of the stuff that we've already textured. So it's going to definitely need to be smaller. So it's going to be like down something like that. And that scales up the ribs. That's a little bit better. It's probably not perfect, but we'll, that's a good start anyway. We're not we're not worried about I guess being perfect I guess on everything right now. We tried to line up uh, such things that we could, um, like the mortar joints of the uh, the cinder block, even though they're misscaled, overscaled. Uh, but that's about it. I mean that's really the only preciseness that we've had on the model so far. But now that we're getting it established as far as where all these polys are on the texture. Now, from that point, we can adjust the texture to be able to accommodate the overscaling of such things as the blocks and things like that. I can't stress that enough as far as like what the importance, I guess, of doing that. Don't try to do that, you know, at the same time as you're trying to map it, because as you move along, you're going to find out you're rescaling your texture either too big or too small, depending on different areas of the model that you're mapping. So it's better to just to go ahead and get everything mapped and get a sense of how much um, how much of the texture you need to scale back up or down based on how you're applying it to the whole model you know get a sense of if you're if your scaling I guess of your texture is, is correct I guess in other areas than it is somewhere else on the model that's going to give you a sense of where do I need to adjust do I need to move a different area to a different part of the texture so I can rescale it in a different way say for example 
So this is the approach that I've taken against on this is to get get it all get it all mapped you know, based on uh, specific areas and even the same areas I guess of the texture and see how that presents itself on the model and get a sense of okay I know I need to scale these down but I can't necessarily do that just by adjusting that texture you know right in the texture itself and not the mapping on the model if you can adjust it in the texture as opposed to um, the UV mapping itself on the model that we've been applying this whole time sometimes that's going to save you a lot of time to do that so hopefully that all makes sense though I know sometimes it can get very confusing but there's a method to the madness when it comes to texturing basically boils down to if you can avoid having to re-UV map um, again as we've been doing here then do it that way as far as just adjust the texture and not the, the UV mapping of the model itself. Okay, so that's all done. I'm going to go ahead and save this now. The only thing we got left that I want to at least complete during this session is this uh, uh, little silo house here. That's all that concrete uh, concrete block. Let's see if we can get back to that. Let's, um, yeah, so this deal right here. On this angle so we can see it's just got that and it's got like a metal you know some railing and stuff like that I don't have that all applied just yet I just want to get that center block around the planet and does have some doors on it um, so whether or not I'll apply some a cutout for a door on it I may not do that right now but I just want to get it textured I guess with the center block but that'll be something else I'll have to add to the finer details like you know such as the railing and the door and all that kind of stuff on it but just to get it textured with the uh, the cinder block that'll be our first step at least here anyway so let's do that next I'm gonna go ahead did I save that I'll do it again anyway it's not gonna hurt let's save this and we'll apply the yep let's go ahead and drop this down like so cool now let's apply the texture to this and this is gonna be our last piece before we necessarily bring this to a close for this session anyway all right so that's applied now I want to do unwrap open our UV editor put the texture and then this is all going to be that uh, center block that I applied earlier I made that whole new section right over in here uh, so that's right next to our white uh, center block okay that we've already applied to our main building here so um, yeah let's start picking some polys here so let's go here very simple shape um, let's do the F2 so we can see what we're selecting very simple shape uh, as far as the top there I'll probably just put some like the dark on it um, and by dark, I mean, uh, let me see, what, where did my, uh, whoops, did I minimize it? I did. Yeah, so I can put, oh shoot, I did cover that. All right, so what I might be able to do is adjust the texture and put um, even this metal on there. I could do that too. I got an area on the texture here that I'm not using yet, which is right in here. I wanted to save some of this, I guess, for the stairs, but I can even apply it on this. I can make this the roof, at least for now, as far as this green area. That'd, that would work, too. We're not using that yet. Cool. So we do have options, anyway. So, got that selected. We'll do a quick planner on that. And I'm going to filter this out. And... We need to put this cinder block onto it right over here. Right over here. I want to make this look decent. Okay. That's not too bad so far. Yeah get a sense of how that's going to look anyway. Uh, let's pick this side. Do the quick plan.
Miner. And I think just for the giggles of that, I'm going to go ahead and unfilter so I can see where I put the last one here. And I could probably line this one right up. Maybe even try to grid snap this again. <laughs> I know the grid snap hasn't been very cooperative. We'll give it a try though. Alright, let's go back. Whoa. Uh, no, 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 no. Get out of that. Alright, we'll leave it like that for now until I get some of these out of the way. Because otherwise, if I filter that out, I'm not going to be able to see it. But you kind of get it, uh, again, you get kind of the sense of how this is going to line up. Right now, it's not perfectly lined up. But we'll get it lined up here once we get all the rest of the sides. Do I got a bottom on this? I do. Dang it. I need to take that out. So once I get this map, I'll take this bottom out because you're not going to see that. I just made this a simple box. So it's. I forgot to move that poly. You're not going to be able to see that poly, so there's no sense of having it there. Okay, so. Quick planner. And we'll filter now. Let's not filter. Let's just do... I'm going to try and put these all somewhat over top of each other. I'll kind of uh, keep them somewhat close. But leave a little bit of offset to these so I can potentially grid snap these all. There we go. So next... I'm not going to worry about mapping the bottom. So. so all I'm doing is get these scaled down into here. And I'm kind of creating like an accordion effect on these here too. Because like I said, I can, uh, I can grid snap these down. Just get them in a the general area here. For starters, there we go. Yep, so you kind of get a sense of what's it's going to look like once we get this done. So on the top, I'm going to put that in that green area as I mentioned earlier. Let's do a quick planner. So that's going to be the bottom. I'm not going to worry about that one. That, yeah, this last green box that's left is probably the bottom. I don't need that. Okay, so this I'm going to put in this green area down here and use that as the roof. Okay, perfect. Now, cool. And the fact that we don't have any of the railings or anything like that kind of makes it somewhat blob, but it gives you a little bit more dynamic as far as the texture on that. Okay, the scaling is probably off too, just like it is um, on the other center blocks. We'll get that scaled up. I do have that as a guide uh, to be able to use that. I'll probably apply the same uh, concept to get that scaled properly in the texture. I'm gonna For now, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this down really quick. All right, and then I'm going to take out this bottom poly. Um, just like that poly. Let's take that out. Now I'm going to reapply the unwrap. Now what I want to do is get those grid snap on all those sides. Um, so we go unwrap again. Okay, so now we can just go to texture. Now we can just grid snap these together. So I'll use this outer yeah this outer part here I guess to get it snapped right let's span this out here a little bit grid snap go to vertex grab that what is this one here uh, see this thing doesn't want us it's been very temperamental today has not wanted to snap 
Come on. Why are you being such a butt? <laughs> I don't know why this doesn't want to snap. That's crazy. All right, let me do it a different way here. Since it doesn't want to grid snap. Normally that would snap right to that position there, but it's being very temperamental this time around. So what I'll do is I'll select this poly, for example, and we'll get it lined up this way. Actually, it's almost like this one I can adjust down just a little bit like this. Let's do that. Select that one again. We'll just line them up this way. They're not going to probably be 100% perfect. That's better if, I, if it would grid snap, but... Since that doesn't want to cooperate, we're gonna comp. We're just gonna compromise here. We'll line them up like so. This is not the best thing I wanted to do. I guess to get these, I'd rather have them grit snap. That's for sure. But. back up here just to make sure. Hard to tell there with those other two in there. Let's grab this one. Yeah. Line that up. Whoops, nope, I want to leave that one there. What the heck? I already had that one set. There we go. Yeah, would it be so much easier if we could grid snap this thing, but. Oh well. Kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to do here, though, I hope. As far as get these all lined up. Wait. Does that need to be lined up with this one here? Shoot, now I'm getting lost. Which one am I supposed to be lining up? That's why it would be so much better if I can work in grids and at this. So much better. These are 100% not lining up like they, like I'd like them to be, but oh well. Alright, so now we just got this one other set here. I'm going to bring that lined up here. This one's crooked for some reason. I don't know why. Seems like it anyway. I mean, it's pretty close, but I mean, it's not 100% snapped to it. Like I'd like it to be. Okay. So I guess that's going to have to suffice for now. So now if we look at this, we should have the mortar joints somewhat lined up now. You can see, it gives you that sense of... Yeah. It's not bad there. Not too bad there. Oh, there's no. S oh, okay. I didn't realize I didn't have a side here. What the heck? Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Just so now I thought I had four sides. Let me bring the silos back. I don't know why I didn't put anything here. Must be because of the way the silos are covering it, maybe. Could be. Let me bring those silos back here really quick. So, um, 
feed mill silos. That's interesting, and I don't know why I did take that one out. I really need to have a side here. I don't know why I left that out. I guess I'll have to figure out what's up with that. I know I only took the bottom out. At least I thought that's all I took out was the bottom. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's probably something else I'll have to tackle as far as to put a, a side on that. Because the silos definitely don't cover that. So that's pretty much going to be it for this session here, at least anyway. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this down on that UV mapping. Cool. Right on. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's um, getting a majority and a, a huge bulk of the... Um, feed mill mapped at least anyway initially so we got pretty much everything if we were to collapse this at this point we'd have a better sense of where all the wire mapping is on our t overall texture we're only using one texture for this whole thing so far so it'll be really interesting i guess to see how there's, it's probably going to be a jumbled mess in there 100 percent guarantee uh but as far as needing to adjust that um to clean it up i guess um from the overall, as far as once you collapse all together and get the wire mapping, as and then apply it to the, that collaborative and um, consolidated wire mesh, I guess applied to the texture, will we necessarily see if we need to clean up some of the areas um, on that to keep it clean? You know, keep the overall wire mesh, I guess, goodbye. Because eventually, this is this whole model is going to be collapsed down, right? Uh, because it is only using the one texture. So that's something we'll have to look at next time and see what we'll need to clean up on the overall wire mesh uh, once we get it collapsed down. I'll do that. I'll show that next next week. So, um, very good session. We got a lot accomplished, I feel. Uh, we did have to backtrack, I guess, a little bit as far as, uh, you know, all the uh, the scene crash, you know, as far as I get, being able to reestablish the scene uh, for the overall model and such. But uh, we were, I was able to at least show, I guess, how to be able to recover, I guess, from stuff like that. So um, hopefully that was in insightful and informative and valuable, at least for that, for that much. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just um, feel free, I guess, to stick around, I guess, for the what I consider to be a soft raid at the end of the stream. Uh, just feel free to stick around, I guess, for the the host at the end of the stream. I am just going to go ahead and end this thing right here because I'm f freaking famished. I need to get some food in me. And... Uh, I do hope everybody does have a fantastic rest of their weekend and hope to see you very soon. Uh, the, the earliest stream that I will be streaming as far as on the schedule will be Wednesday for Request Wednesday. Uh, so I hope to see you all that time, if anything at all. I do stream on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays for Spine Design Studio Saturday. Um, but feel free, if you haven't already, uh, to hit the follow button on the channel to make sure you get the notifications for when the stream goes live. I also have the Discord, uh, the Twitter, and Spline Design Studios Facebook group page. I do post on there on the regular. On the regular, I guess, to be able to uh, to let everybody know, I guess, as far as what's going on as the prequel to the stream, sometimes even during the stream, and even post-stream. So anytime in between the streams, I necessarily, I necessarily do post in those forums. So feel free to check those at your leisure as well. Um, again, do hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Try to stay cool. I know some people are uh, dealing with some pretty balmy weather. I know I am here myself. So with all that being said, I appreciate you all. We'll see you again real soon. Bye for now.